is BYOT for noon tacos. Dick swinging, swinging. You're listening to American Slacker Podcast. We can say fuck. Say fuck. With Matthew Gertz and Jesse Landers. I don't care if it's spoken. This is cool. That's a decent amount of sausage. This man needs a doctor. Yeah. I just hope they're tasty. What's up with these clowns, man? Cut the lights and went through people's pockets. Don't you point that at each other. Let them smoke a little. You need to like step it up to that point. <laughs> we're not gonna. We're not gonna lead with the. We're not gonna lead. Um, All right, this is uh, awesome. Thanks for having me on. This is how it's been. This is how it will be. And when you wake up with him, remember when it was me. And I Try to walk away There's nothing left 
fantastic that man. was amazing man that was amazing one of the best ways we've ever started this show welcome yeah, to right. american slacker <laughs> podcast as always i'm matt and i'm jesse and today we are joined by our esteemed guest mr dan simon that's right yes uh, i'm dan i'm from just surrender i'm one of the band members and uh guys let me just put this back up right here <laughs> okay. yeah. Some microphone adjustments uh as he was yeah. just performing uh, yeah, thank, you. Awesome. thank you. So I appreciate much. it very much. Thank you guys for having me on the program. Uh, it's a privilege and an honor to be here. So oh, we're man. we're you know blown away by the yeah. fact that you said yes to talk to us. We've yeah. been big fans of you and just surrender for like God. since almost like, 20, for a decade now. Yeah, yeah, well over a decade. I mean, Jesus, 2005. I was uh, looking through my ticket stub collection to see <laughs> when I found you guys. I had no clue who you were. I saw you open for some 41 and I was sure. like, on that show, I broke a guitar string too. Yes, like, you uh, did. You did, dude. I and did. You still fucking, you outdid some 41 by far, honestly. And, uh, I immediately went back to your merch table, bought if, uh, what, if these streets could talk, if these streets could talk. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah and yeah, your original. And, uh, right after you had changed from a second chance, I believe. And man, that fucking CD got overplayed so hard. <laughs> well, thank you so much. I mean, yeah. Dude. It's been a long road and a long journey, but it's, yeah. uh, you know, it, yeah, it, I remember that show, there was this huge debate, like, oh, you got to change your strings, dude. And I was like, nah, man, I got this. Cause uh, <laughs> no, I got this. And I, I did not change the string. And then I broke it like in the, I don't know, probably the second or third song. And they're like, oh. they just looked over and they're like, fucking <laughs> asshole piece of shit. And I was just like, I am. And then, you know, I mean, the show goes on, as they say, and yeah. And yeah so uh, yeah. I changed it mid, you know, set. I think it was like, I don't know, maybe like two minutes, a minute and a half or something like that. But yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's been a long time since then. And like I said before, I'm super happy to be here. And I'm just happy that, you know, that you guys asked me to be on the show. Hell yeah, man. Uh, we were, just, we're fucking stoked to have you. We're glad to see you're still going at it, man. Like, you guys are still ripping it up. I mean, I saw you guys probably seven, eight months ago, and you performed fucking better than ever. It was insane. Well, was like, as long as you say so, that's all that matters. So, I mean, yeah. you know, being out of uh, playing for a long time, it, it kind of forget. You don't forget. It's like a, an actor, and they come back 10 years or 10, 12 years later to – you know, reprise the role that they, you know, were famous for or younger. Um, yeah. And it's like putting on a jacket and that I was so scared the last, uh, the first show that we did, it was, I guess it was last summer. And I was just like, it's going to be horrible. No one's going to remember us. No one's going to care. Oh, whatever. God. It's like at the Bowery electric. And I just remember, and just sitting there and just like, this is going to be the worst experience ever. And then we went out there and hit that first stage. It was like, Oh, Duh, like this is, this is, yeah, duh. I used to do this for like 10 years, like sitting in the back of the van, not eating anything and just drinking obsessed, you know, <laughs> all the time. And then I'm, you know, I didn't really drink that much for the show. I had like a drink and whatever. And then I just hit that first chord and it was like the biggest high ever. I was just like, yes, this is what yeah. I've been missing the rest of my, you know, for I don't know how however long it was. Since that's, last a hard, that's a hard hole yeah. to fill in the yeah. life. Imagine, you yeah, know, you can't yeah, really get that rush anywhere else. <laughs> no. Absolutely, I mean, no drug or uh, sex or whatever it can compare to once you, you know, you look out there and people are singing along or just having fun, oh. and they're and they're there, you know, sometimes for you, but not if you're like doing if you're opening for some forty one or another band, but like just that that adrenaline rush, it's as high and like, yeah, man, I was just like, fuck, man, why don't I do this any enough? Like, and yeah. uh, that was what started to like we've been doing some more shows because oh yeah jumping. and uh so yeah i mean it was awesome that, that i was so happy that people even remember the song and people were like going crazy Dude, and like you the know, chance man time. you're showing the chance in march like every single person in that goddamn building which was stuffed to the brim 
was singing along with every song, dude. Yeah, it was, I, I was just looking around in awe, like, you know, it was just amazing, the energy in that fucking building. To be honest with you, I, I was so, I mean, I'm nervous, I guess, now I'm nervous about all the shows because they're so, so few and far between. When you're on tour, it's like a show, a show, a show, a show, a show, a show, a show. But these ones have been like four months five months apart so it's just like you do the show you get that high and then the next day you're super i'm super depressed because like all the endorphins and adrenaline it's just like depleted and then the next day it's like i'm going back to my regular job and you know and then you get back into that cycle and then you get it again and before it it's like the nerves and then for that show it was just on real how crazy it was like we wanted when we booked it we wanted it to be in the loft it was like the i think the loft is like a I don't know, 300 capacity, 400, maybe it could be much larger, but we wanted it to be a small and intimate setting because we haven't played in so long. And, you know, then Frank, the owner of the chance was like, no, 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 we're doing it in the big room. It's like, you're fucking crazy, dude. Fuck you. Small. If we have to, you know, get people away, it doesn't matter. Cause then it's, he's like, trust me, bro. And he's like this jacked up dude that works out. And I'm just like, hey, man, you're the guy who, who's been doing this for a very long time. If you think it's going to be all right in the chance, then then okay, you know. Yeah. And uh, then he booked it in the chance and like it was really awesome. And uh, yeah, oh, it was a success. And I was just like, I don't know nice. shit. I'm not going to pretend that I know anything anymore. I'm just going to say, yes, you're the promoter. You book who you want and you say, and I'll just show up and, and do my part. Yeah. So. That's crazy to hear that, man. Like that you guys wanted the smaller atmosphere, like when the outcome, you know, I can understand now, like why you're saying that, but like, man, that outcome, I mean, you're glad you did it. Like, right. Oh, absolutely. I mean, we made probably a thousand more dollars by doing it that way. That's awesome. Then, you know, thinking about it, like we, all three of us have been to the the chance before it's in my mind, it's definitely something that you guys could fill. Maybe it's just coming from the fan side of things as opposed to, you know, you're always going to be more critical of yourself. Mm -hmm. Like, Oh, we're not going to be able to fill that. But yeah, I mean, I could see that whole thing filled for you guys. Yeah. I mean, exactly. Yeah. yeah, we're just yeah, so out of it, you know. I mean, music and entertainment and all that stuff changes, and like, I mean, it's been a minute since I think the last time that we played in Poughkeepsie. Um, our former bass player Kyle, he, you know, whatever happened, he just disappeared on our last show that we played there. Like, our oh, band is notorious pretty, for oh, before the show. He just yeah, yeah. Show up. our band is notorious for like, oh like, shit, partying partying or whatever so like uh we what? did two i think we did two nights there or whatever or it did was like the loft and then yeah so yeah. we we get to uh the show the gig and all that stuff and then uh he disappears and we're like oh, Holy where, shit. where the fuck is hammer and uh we we're just looking around no idea and then uh because like i said our fans know that we like to party yeah. I'll just put it very uh, loosely, okay? <laughs> so we're just like, maybe he just met a fan or, you know, he yeah. was single at the time and he is a notorious ladies man. So he kind of <laughs> oh, looks boy. like Russell Crowe. So like, he, you know, all over America, he, there would just be women. <laughs> and and uh, so like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And we get to the show, he's there, we're hanging, blah, 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 drinking and whatever. And uh, then he disappears. And then like showtime, it's like, I, you know, and this is just an estimate. Let's just say that we play at 10.30, 10.20, uh, 10.25. It's a like, dude, where the fuck is Hammer? I don't fucking know. I thought he was with you. Shit. Uh, no, no, he wasn't with me. I thought he was fucking with you. I was with blah, 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 blah. He doesn't show at the 10.30, you know, empty spot. So then Jay has to pick up the bass and, uh, you know, I mean, Jay play the bass on the first two records um, Mm -hmm. and then kind of Steve for our third record. So like, this was like during our third record cycle Phoenix and you know, we're, this is just like a big show because we haven't played, you know, before that time, I don't even know when the last time we played the chance was or the law after the chance complex, whatever. And Yeah. uh, yeah, so he's not there. We play the show and then like, we kind of just rotate the bass, uh, you know, for the Phoenix set or whatever. And then uh, afterwards, they found him in a closet, just passed out. Oh no! Like, yeah, I think he like he's like, dude, someone drugged me, and uh, just like, dude, you fucking drugged yourself, man. He's like, <laughs> what, whatever, and uh, yeah. So like, and then that was like 
our last show with Hammer or whatever. But and then uh, then I think we might have played like a couple shows after that here or there. But um, yeah, after that, I mean, it was kind of like the end, the you know the end of uh, us doing the the circle or the circuit of yeah. just you know everyone was just kind of burnt out. And For I now. mean. I don't want to say they were drug addicts or, or definitely drunks, but like you can do it for so long until your body gives out. And like the amount of stuff that we were doing is kind of just like, all right, man, you need to calm down. Like I was having a conversation with somebody recently about alcohol. They're like, Oh yeah, well like you don't really drink that much. I was like, well, you know, before you knew me, I was in a band and like I did a tally of how many days that when I had, I didn't drink, you know? So like I went on a calendar, we were on like some really long ass tour and, you know, I was just like, when was the last day I did not drink? And, uh, I couldn't think of it. It was like two months or like three months or something. And like, when we drink, it's not like, Oh, let's have a drink, you know, yeah, talk, yeah. whatever. It's just like, there's either beer pong or a <laughs> funnel or, oh, yeah. you know, or a keg stand. And like, you go to a different city every night you know, fans that love the tunes want to hang out and party with the band. And, you know, we're bums in terms of how much money we're making or anything like that. So, like, yeah. And, I mean, we a lot of times we weren't staying in people's houses. We're just crashing on the couch with someone. And they're like, yeah, dude, we brought all of our friends. We stayed at, like, a bunch of frat houses and all. <laughs> you know, I mean, you're you're trying to cut costs at every yeah. point when you're on tour. I oh, mean, yeah. eventually you get to a certain level and then you just pay for, you know, through the roof or a bus and it's like five or six hundred dollars a day and then wow. all this other stuff but i mean you know you're a, a struggling artist trying to make ends meet like and just addicted to drinking and, and whatever uh you know we would just rock roll and just burn the candle yeah. on both ends and uh yeah it was like three months and like i said before it's not just a couple of drinks it's like keg stands funneling i mean i guess it's like the college experience to a lot binge, of people. Binge drinking, essentially. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so. yeah it goes with but the that, scene. It sounds like you got it all done in one, like, chunk. So now you can, like, the rest... Yeah, I mean, go, sometimes I'd turn into like, Frank Tank, but... Hey, I was going to say, it. we kind of... Uh, we, everybody <laughs> went out after the Chance show to, uh, to have some drinks, and I definitely saw... Dan having a few drinks, doing some karaoke. Oh, sure. <laughs> sure. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Uh, you know... Which you killed it, by the way. I'm trying to remember. I, I think you did like a Bon Jovi song. I did. My brother I was and wondering I. What, yeah. I was wondering what the go-to karaoke song was. Yeah, me and oh. Dave did uh, fucking like story of the year. And then all of a sudden I see right. Dan grab the mic and start doing Bon Jovi. And I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> well, it's a, Halfway uh, there, living on a prayer? <laughs> yeah, uh, we did Born to Be My Baby. And, okay. Yep. And at that place, uh, <laughs> probably in like the middle of Just Surrender, I – like I said, I used to manage a music store and the owner of the music store is a professional DJ. And he, when I work there, he's like, Oh, just randomly one time. Oh, I can't do this karaoke job. Can you do it? It's super easy. Anyone could do it. All you got to do is press a button and uh, whatever. So it was actually at that place. It used to be called the Dutch cabin. Now it's Billy Bob's or, or whatever. So yeah, I started hosting karaoke and I became a DJ after that. So like, I don't know, I guess that was like 2006 or something. So I would, okay. every weekend I would host karaoke at that place. And uh, so whenever we do a chant show or Poughkeepsie or something like that, and like I said, we don't really do this often, but I would always do the after party there. Yep. And we did it that, 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 uh, that night there. My brother also is a singer and, uh, you know, I made up, when I was a karaoke, he would be like one of my regulars. So I created a name for him, Erickson. His name is Mark, but you know, you got to have a stage name, Bono, Madonna. <laughs> Erickson. Yep. So Erickson. Uh, yeah, Perfect. anytime he, uh, anytime I host karaoke, he would come and uh, we would always sing together. So like that night, we just did our usual routine. And like sometimes in Just Surrender, I always feel like, I mean, Jay and I sing ultimately the same amount but I sing a lot of the underneath harmonies and stuff like that to, to work with him. So like with my brother, it's kind of almost the same thing. Like for that song, I sing the lead, but usually we'll sing like Everly brothers and Elvis and the Beatles. And like, usually I'm supporting him, but that night, you know, we were rocking rolling and, uh, you know, we did that song and then, uh, 
It was good. I love to, uh, to sing with him. I love singing with Jay. And that night was just a good night. And I definitely was uh, appreciating the cocktails. You know, I got an <laughs> Uber. I don't recommend anyone drinking a drive-in. It's like a $10,000 uh, oh yeah. fee or something like that, opposed to like maybe, a, you know, 50, 40, 30, 20, depending on how far you are to yeah. do an Uber. So, Uber yeah, is like, so cheap. Take the Uber. <laughs> it is, man. Every time, like, even if you have to spend $30 one way and $30 at 60, like, I have a couple friends that have, you know, gotten DWIs that bleed down or whatever, but it's like $9,000, $10,000. An Uber once is uh, way cheaper than an yeah. Uber every time from that, that yeah. point on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you get your license and, taken away. I know. Like, it's it's horrible and so at that show i i definitely got back into the party party mode but i mean it's you know we don't do that often so it's like it was good to uh yeah, yeah get in and well and like I, you said it's like every four months now it seems like as opposed to you know back to back to back yeah yeah months. man i think you do that <laughs> yeah i mean it uh, yeah, it's hard though because yeah, you have this spot in your brain where you're like, "Oh, I can drink this much. I can drink this much," and then you drink <laughs> that much, and then the next day you're like, "I can't oh, drink that much." No, it's and uh, it's like two days in a row of just being like, "Fuck," you know. <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta rotate a, a water in between each of those beers. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I try to do that, but like, it's hard liquor. It's tough. Now, you know, so oh, it's just man. like, I mean, back then it was just like shotgun beers and all this stuff, but like. <laughs> You know, if, yeah, man, I, I I try not to do that often, but sometimes you just get caught in the moment and you're like, all right, well, all right. okay. Let's the the older you get, the more you feel it, but yeah, you still got to have fun. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, I never see those guys. Like, I, like, honestly, like, I haven't seen them, Jay or Jolly or, uh, you know, Josh or like, you know, I, I haven't seen them since our last show that we played. So, like, I, oh, wow, it's man. almost like a reunion because, like, they're all, like, spread out. Like, yeah, you know, you know, we played with Steve, Steve, the, you know, our drummer and uh, co-writer or whatever. And we played a show recently. I, I mean, it's not really recent now, but I guess it was, like, December or January. And before that, I didn't see him for, like, a year or something. So, it's just, like, yeah. wow, you know, it's never spread out now, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's like being in a band is like being either in the army or college or so like you you go through this experience together and then you like kind of spread out and then you don't see the people until you like re you know you have a reunion or, or something like that. So like when I see these dudes, it's just like, hey, what's going on? Oh, dude, yeah, what the fuck? Blah, 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 blah. I mean, it's like you know you you read a book, you stop at a chapter, you put it down, and then whenever you get back you open it up and the story is still the same. Mm -hmm. So when I see these guys, it's like it never, you know, it just picks up where I left off, but yeah. nice. more and more and more, it's just like, you know, few and far between. And a lot of times it's just like, well, when we used to hang out, we used to get banged up, dude. So like, <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm like, you know, some of us are getting married, some of us are already married. And so yeah, it's no. just like, you know, uh, you know, I try to cherish them, these moments now more and more and more because you know you never know when it's uh not to get all like oh emo or whatever even though we're emo <laughs> band or whatever but you never know like uh, when it's gonna be the last one so it's just like yeah. you know hey i have a kid i can't do the show hey you know like i moved to here there or wherever so yeah like now more than ever i just try to you know like i said beforehand we're just like yeah let's get fucking wow and yeah. now it's just more like I just want to appreciate this moment. Everyone's singing along. We sound like pretty good as a band. Like I just want to like appreciate it more. Yeah. That's a good. That's so, a good perspective to have. At least you know you're you're be able to reflect on it sort of it, yeah. as it's happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think the fans appreciate that too, man. The whole idea, like you know, like how your drummer Steve is like in Chicago now, but like you're still mm -hmm. making rounds. You know, you got your your temporary drummer. Or, you know, like and uh, Josh. Who's Josh, doing a fantastic cool. job, by the way. Man, great job. And also, he was in Houston Calls for a bit. Like, he's been that's around. Right, yeah. He's a great drummer. So, like, yeah, that's, oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Like, Houston Calls is another one of my favorite bands of all time, too. So, yeah. like, and we're, we're talking to the bassist from from them as well, trying yeah, to get we're talking, Yeah, yeah, yeah we might sure. get yeah. him on. He wants to come on. Yeah. Um, oh, absolutely. He's a yeah. lovely guy. I mean, yeah, yeah, he's a really nice guy, too, man. Um, but yeah, it's amazing that you guys, you know, I think the fans appreciate that too. You guys are still, you know, you're making do, you're still putting out the shows a couple times a year. 
And I think, you know, like what you appreciate it, you want to do it because you, you know, you get the high off of it as a performer. Yeah. But absolutely. we want to see you so bad dedication. That yeah. like it's amazing to us that you're still doing it. Yeah, I mean, for a while I was just like, uh I mean, when you do that for so long and like it's when you start out as just a guy in in some someone's parents' garage, right? You're just like, yeah. oh, there's fame, fortune, and all this other stuff. And then you get into it. It's like, oh, we got to get signed. We got to get signed. We have to get signed. Like, in order to be a band, you have to be signed. So then you get signed. And then you're like, all right, well, no, no, no. We, uh, we need a booking agent. You got to have a booking agent. You get a booking agent. Oh, you know, uh, yeah. when you're at that, you know, it's every... It's in. It's like keeping up with the Joneses, but for yeah, music. It's insatiable. Keeping up with the Stones, I guess it would yeah. be. In- <laughs> yeah, it's insatiable. So like, you're never satisfied. I need this. I need this. I need this. I need this. And like, a lot of times you never. I mean, for me, I can't speak on everybody else, but it's just like, you look out and you're just like, fuck, this is shit. You know. Meanwhile, there's so many other bands that are working so hard, struggling. They can't get signed. They don't have an agent. Like, I mean, at one point when we were. You know, we're in a subsidiary, Warner Brothers. We have Lincoln Park's manager. Uh, you know, another point, we have Metallica's booking agent. Like, <laughs> these are, like, huge fucking things. And then, yeah. you know, I'm staring out the fucking window of a van. I'm just being like, my life sucks. I am a piece yeah. of shit. Like, <laughs> horrible. Like, this is the worst thing ever. And then, like, you know, rewind, like, five years or six years before that, and you're just like, Dude, I just wish we could, you know, get uh, I don't know, a thousand hits on mp3.com or yeah. feel volume or, or yeah. you know, then in MySpace, whatever. You know, yep. I mean, I, I think MySpace. on MySpace at one point, yeah, we had like over a million here and like oh, you, you know, millions, yeah. whatever. So it's just, Plays, like, yeah. and you're just, like, I mean, I guess that's the life of a, oops, sorry, uh, you know, musician or artist, whatever. Nothing's ever good enough. You're, you know, you're constantly in this state of like, oh. I'm, like this isn't, you know, now looking back, it's just like, Hey man, like stop beating yourself up. Like you, you <laughs> did some cool stuff. Like you went to a bunch of places, like, you know, a bunch of my people in my family have never went to Japan or the United Kingdom or, you know, like seen almost, uh, you know, 48 out of 50 States, wow, uh, yeah. you know, or, or these other experiences. But I guess like when you're in that world, like you're just, you know, programmed or conditioned to just be like, nothing's good enough until well then it's still work too and it's your art which Mm -hmm. makes it even harder to be like satisfied with it (laughs) yes yeah true absolutely i mean i i remember we we went on our first tour with this band called autopilot off yep um and like we're like wow this is the greatest fucking thing ever like we're playing to like i don't know i mean the the shows weren't huge or whatever but like first time ever going on a tour you remember every stop and you're just like you know everything and then uh did another one with them and then we went on another tour and then i remember one of them uh this was before we were signed or anything nitro records um dexter from the offspring i think is it was his label or or whatever oh wow Uh, yeah, so like Nitro Records is like kind of like Epitaph, but just a little bit below or whatever. But West Coast, all this other stuff. Everyone in the band was like, this is the greatest thing ever. And, and I was just like, I don't know, man. It doesn't feel right or whatever. <laughs> you, know, I, you know, you're always kind of just like, no, I want to be on this and do this or whatever. And, uh, you know, it's just like, you're never going to be happy, unfortunately. And uh, I mean, now in retrospect, I'm just like, it's okay to be happy. There's nothing wrong with that. It's not being like you're an egomaniac or anything. Just kind of try to appreciate the things that you have because you don't know, you know, when it's going to end or any of these things. And then like mm. now it's just like, okay, dude, you fucking, it's okay, man. Like you haven't played a show in five years and like, you know, 500, 700 people came to this. They're singing along. They're having a good time. Like, why not, man? So, yeah. you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and I don't know if you know this. I mean, you guys still have like 45,000 average monthly listeners on Spotify. So, I mean, for not putting out a new album in what, like three years, I think it's been, right? Uh, uh, you yeah, know, it's probably more, to be honest with you. Oh, I have God, no yeah. idea. For some reason, yeah. I thought Phoenix came out a little later than it did. So, it's been eight years and people are still like eating this up like it's candy. Yeah. No, 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 like <laughs> Kobayashi. <laughs> I like it. I, I mean, to be honest with you, I don't know. Well, maybe it's an error on BMI. There's the people who do the publishing, but like in the past, I don't know, year, like 
you know, we've never been a huge royalty band or whatever, but I mean, our royalty checks in the past year have been like way more than like ever huh. before. And I, I don't, you know, I, I don't know the metric. And for some reason in Germany, we're like, cause they, they give you a statement and an invoice to itemized receipt of everywhere that it's played or whatever, yeah. you know? And uh, for some reason there, it's just like awesome. Like I, I surrender I, as good. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. What it is. I mean, and it's Phoenix, like, uh, you know, the, I have no idea. I'm totally awesome. I, I mean, I, you know, anytime you can make extra money by, just, you know, doing nothing mailbox money, yeah. uh, it's sort passive of cool. income, man. That's, yeah. that's the yeah, goal. Man. Yeah, man. Absolutely. Good, man. Uh, I'm making money while you yeah. sleep. <laughs> yeah. Trust me. I mean, I think, I don't know. I think, I mean that it comes from that record. I think it's great because like, I, you know, I know that everyone loves it. If these streets could talk, uh, you it's know, still my our favorite, second, classic, yeah. Our, still second my favorite. record, uh, we're in like San, like, you know, that record. I mean, each record has like the moments, whatever. Yeah. Uh, if these streets could talk, it's the classic first record for a lot of bands. It's like you're a band for five, six, seven, whatever years, and like, you know, you you write a million songs, and then it's almost like a greatest hits before you get signed. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, it's so it's just years, like, of, years of work at that point. Yeah. So like that record, it's just like before I joined the band, they were a, a, a second chance. Then they turned it into ASC, and when they were ASC, I joined the band, and they wrote like a bunch of songs. Like it was Jay, Steve, uh, and Andy, and yeah. they wrote a bunch of songs. And then I guess uh, our friend Alex, who ended up being like a super successful photographer, and then uh, he is like a woods work kind of guy. He makes like all kinds of great stuff, but. Uh, you know, Alex left and Jay and I worked together in a pizza place. He was, you know, I was a senior. No, no, no. I was, I graduated. He was like in 10th grade and he was washing dishes and I'm the delivery guy. So like, this guy's a little fucking piece of shit. I remember he had his first cigarette and I'm just like, eh, whatever. <laughs> and he would, he, and I was always, always into music and, and I liked him because like he's in a band, you know, like, now what is three years or four years to somebody but what you know the hierarchy of high school or whatever it's a, it's a much different thing it's like you know i graduated college or i'm in college he is in high school and, and like whatever so like but he one time i mean they did a demo and he brought it to work and i was like this is you this is your brand he's like yeah man you know uh and then i was like fuck dude these guys are good man like <laughs> i wish i could get a part of something because like, i joined some hardcore band i don't i never before i joined the band i never listened to hardcore music or anything like that. oh shit and, uh, yeah but i just wanted to be in a band that like played shows and all this other stuff and uh he played that for me and i was like fuck and then i went to a juliana theory concert with uh this other guy that we worked with john schild and uh, he ended up being our tour manager He's like, Danny boy, you got to join ASC, man. I was like, John, they're like five years, four years younger than me. I don't know, dude. He's like, Danny boy, listen to the fucking demos. And I was like, I did. They're really good. And uh, I did. And then I uh, I was just like, you know, I'll do it. And then uh, they're just like, hey, man, the only real reason why we wanted you is because you're 21 and you could buy us alcohol. And I was just like... <laughs> Oh, you, you know. fucks. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but anyway, you know, that I joined, I was a substitute teacher too. So I had a bunch of them in my classes that I thought I wanted to be a teacher because I'm from a family of teachers and blah, 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 blah. And uh, they were <laughs> fucking yeah, dickheads. Yeah. And uh, I did it. And then, like, once I joined, we wrote all new songs. And, uh, you know, then the songs that we wrote ended up being on, you know, If These Streets Could Talk. And, and like, uh, the first song that we did together, I think, was this song called which burns more but before that like i had a, like a little tiny snippet in your silence is the song and then that was like my first like uh chorus or whatever where i be actually became a singer with them and then uh then after that when we just kept doing it and doing it and you know that record holds a special place in my heart but to piggyback what i was talking about phoenix or whatever they uh, that record is you know we we're so burnt out by the end of it like I think that some of the songs are really great on it, but they just didn't have the support or, or, and 
being burnt out and just like you know i think the it last one has a different sound than a your lot first. of different sounds yeah it does i mean it, that and it's kind of reflective of the time of like other stuff that was kind of coming out at that time it almost felt like mm. yeah i think that record is kind of like you know it's, it might sound dated but like hoobastank and like a lot of just radio music that was going on. I like Hoobastank. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fuck with Hoobastank. I mean, that that's not a chance, actually. <laughs> Damn, I'm jealous about that. <laughs> that's a good show to go to. I mean, yeah. yeah, that that record, I mean, you before we decided to do this, you guys were like, oh, you know, is there anything that we can talk about, not talk about, what happened, you know, why did you guys break up or disband or anything like that? Like, that record cycle was, like, kind of the tip of the iceberg to just kind of let go of just, Great like, time. Yeah, man. I mean, like, we work with Lou Giordano, who's done, like, Goo Goo Dolls, Jewel, Ooh. Ooh. Sunny Day Real Estate. And, wow. like, yeah, I mean, to work with a guy, and there's this studio next to our hometown. We grew up in this small rural village in, in uh, the Hudson Valley, Dover yep. Plains. Like, uh, yep. my graduating class was, like, under 100 people, right? Oh, wow. And they'll break. Like, Woohoo. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, like, and then <laughs> to know that we're working with this huge record producer who has like you know the number ones under his belt and you know i so in this small studio in the next town over or two towns over i guess because some of those guys are from wingdale i'm from dover and then it's like town of washington and then millbrook but yeah. we're in this super tiny place with these huge sounds and like the studio itself they did like dave matthews band and like all these like huge artists so like it's like wow this is great this is the next thing you know mm. and uh you know, we put a lot of a lot of juice in that record. I was kind of burnt out, so like Jay and Steve did a lot of uh, the pre-production and and all that stuff. And then you know, we recorded it, and we like felt like, wow, man, we have some solid sounds on this. Like Sin, right? No, no, no. This is for Phoenix. Phoenix, Phoenix. the oh, last God. album. Yeah, yeah. Uh, F- wearing like Sin was just a shit show from the beginning. Andy, the guitarist from our band, like went through like a mental breakdown. We did like a tour before that record. We did a bunch of co-writes because like you get signed to a label, and uh, you know they're like, oh, we gotta have a hit, gotta have a hit. So we went out and worked with all these co-writers who've done with like Dolly Parton, uh, Chicago, like I mean these huge people that have done like Jesse McCarthy, like I mean so wow. many different people who have like you know, pen songs with, and they have like number ones under their belt and all that stuff. So we did that. And then like Andy was like, all right, I can't do this. I can't tour anymore. I'm done. So like midway through writing and recording and all this stuff, he just quits. And then, so then we're just like, fuck dude. Like, you know, and he's the guy that so talented, so smart, so just pop sensibility like in terms of the writing you love the first record right i mean it's that guy sitting watching reruns of seinfeld and friends or whatever and just like We did a so, cover of that song. Yeah, we, yeah. we used to definitely play covers of your songs a lot coming awesome. out of high school. Oh, yeah. So he would just sit at home every night and like he's an antisocial, like if I'm antisocial, he's just like a, crazy. Like he just, yeah, <laughs> totally. Super talented, like, a, you know, and he would just like, you know, do that. And then in every practice we would go and he would do it or whatever. And then like he was like a driving force of the music. And then he's just like, can't do this anymore. Uh, you know, the road is too much. I can't wow. fucking do this shit, whatever. So we're just like, fuck you, dude. Like, we're, this is, you know, we're going up, 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 oh, up, no. up. And then, and now he's just like, all right, I'm done. And then, you know, that record is just kind of thrown together. And then uh, our label, Broken English, uh, which is the subsidiary of Warner Brothers, or whatever, the, the owner of the label had a mental breakdown right before because he worked with another band that he signed to his label. And like, they just like took everything out of his soul. To, uh, mm. before you know so um yeah you know so some people are like oh i love that record i love your life and mine it's i Dude. love your yeah. life and mine. it's the greatest song ever blah blah, blah 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 like the the video is funny the guy looks like adam sandler like <laughs> i like that one nick's jersey the shit but you know that guy you know and then uh 
Phoenix, like for that record, we're just like, okay, we, we went through hell. We have this record, we have a new label, all this promise and these ideas. And then, you know, when we put it out and uh, then they're just like, mm, not feeling it. I'm just like, what are you feeling? Uh, I don't know. And then there's just kind of like this, like, you know, law, we're not going to release another one. You guys are signed to a publishing deal. And, you know, just like, you know, you always hear the term shelved. The record's going to be shelved. You know, it's just bam, blah, blah, blah. So then we're just like, fuck. Jeez, now what? Shit. That kind and of backs you into a corner. It does, really. I mean, and unfortunately, our band, we've never had a guy that's been good with money in it or just negotiating or just like that kind of thing. So we, our band is just filled with a bunch of passive aggressive assholes and just like, oh, yeah, <laughs> fuck you then we're not going to go on tour. If you're not going to pay us like fuck you. And then, uh, you know, that happened and we stopped playing for quite a bit. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I thought you guys were done. I was like heartbroken, honestly, man, me and my yeah. buddy Dave would talk about it every now and again. And then he brought it up when you guys played a show again. I was like, Oh my God. Yeah, I mean, we played like a show. I mean, maybe on average one a year, maybe two. Yeah. It's just yeah. like, hey, I need it was 300. Minimal. Yeah, I was just like, hey, man. I, I mean, after all that shit happened, and I remember it was just like, I knew something was up. We went on tour with Bowling for Soup, and, uh, and that was like awesome. I mean, the shows were pretty good or whatever, but like. Nice party. They're fun. Those they party yeah. hard. We met them. They were fucking yeah. sick. They and they're like, you guys remind us of us. We did a bunch of albums, shit never happened, and we just kept doing it. And then we fucking broke, you know, with uh, 1985 or, or right. Yeah, I like come back to Texas. Uh, the one before that was the girl all the bad guys want. That's what really that one was. Them. Yeah, that was nominated for um, a, a Grammy, I believe. Yeah, yeah, and, and uh, I mean, like that one was huge. I remember seeing them. We did Ernie Ball stage. Uh, they had this warp tour contest yeah. before we were signed or anything like that. We did that, and I just remember hearing them playing, and I'm just like, "Who the fuck is this band? This song is so catchy." I didn't know anything <laughs> about them. And then uh, we played the set or whatever. I had mono; it was a horrible show or whatever. Oh, but um, but then later on, we're like, "Oh yeah, we're going on tour of Bowling Street." We're like, what? Who the fuck are they? Oh, they're that 1985 song. And then like the first night that they they played, I heard that song. I was like, "Dude, that's a fucking band from Warp oh, wow. Tour that I heard." Like. Whatever. Forever. So, yeah. So we did that tour, and then like they're like, "We're gonna be doing UK in like a few months. We're thinking about you guys coming on or whatever. We're gonna extend this tour. Do you guys want to go out for the rest of it?" And then the other guys in my band were like, "No, nah, man. We're gonna go home. We got to spend time with our girlfriends." And I was just like, "Oh no!" What? Man. And then I was just like, "And those guys are like drawing like three thousand, four thousand in the UK, you know?" And I was just like all right, something's up, you know? Cause like at that time I, you know, I was in a relationship for a long time, my, I don't know, maybe six years, seven years, girlfriend broke up with me and was like, all right, let's fucking, what's wrong? Yeah. Well, these other guys, Jay ended up marrying his, uh, the woman that he was with Steve, uh, didn't or whatever. But like, I was just like, wait a minute, we're getting offered possibly a UK tour to three to five. We've been over there three times with like some decent bands, but you know, and then, they're just like, no, nah, we're not going to go. And I was just like, all right, something's up. And then, yeah, then we stopped uh, after that tour. I mean, we played probably maybe like up until recently, maybe three shows or sure. whatever. So, yeah. And then, you know, I mean, it's just uh, everyone was burnt out, tired. And like, like I said, uh, the, the stuff with the label, you just kind of, you know. That's disheartening not, for sure. Yeah. It is. I mean, it comes a point though, it's just like, well, you know, what else do you have to do? As I mentioned earlier, you know, we had a great management. The guy, I mean, got us on Warped Tour, Lucas Kalar. I mean, he's working with so many, like, large milk and honey is the, the company that he's with. I mean, he did a lot of things for us. I mean, like I said, we had, uh, at one point, Metallica's booking agent. Yeah. You know, uh, before that, I mean, we had a... Just like, I mean, we had respectable people, but if you don't break, you don't break, right? Yeah. You can only do what you want. I mean, you can continue to push and, and stuff like that. But those guys, I mean, ultimately, I think when it comes down to it, you're just kind of burnt out, you know, just traveling in a van or a bus or whatever. And you're just like, I don't, I don't really have any money at all. Like I can't yeah. take no. my lady out for a 
a nice dinner or something like that. You're just kind of like, you know. Now, do you think that your, I'm trying to think of how to put this. Do you think your guys' story would have been different in a way if you had come up a few years later with the advent of, you know, more independent ways of getting past the gatekeepers um, with YouTube and all that? Because I know it was, it was sort of like end of MySpace time. Yeah. And MySpace was dying out. Facebook was coming up. YouTube was getting bigger, but you guys had already been signed at that point. So you were sort of beholden to whatever they wanted you to do. Yeah. I mean, I think ultimately I, I can't answer that question. Honestly, I think that realistically the biggest thing that I have an issue with, like with myself, like not on the other guys is probably not just signing with the bit, the nitro records thing. Like I look at back up for me, it's just like, you know, they ended up going uh, under a year later, like realistically, a lot of the successful models of being on an independent label and then going to a major label, it's usually that you, you do a record. If it becomes big or whatever on the independent label, then a major label buzz it out or whatever. And then yeah. like, you know, kind of go up the ladder. Like, That's the process. Yeah. And then Nedra records was like a super respectable punk label uh, with a lot of West coast connections. I mean, we didn't play the warp tour until probably like, I think it was 2008 or 2009. We've been a band since 2002 to some, uh, 2003, you know, our fir- whole first record cycle. Like if it was in like that independent ground up, uh, DYI group kind of dynamic, I think we would have been on Warped Tour way before that because of the connections that those, that label had or whatever. Right. But I mean, looking back on it, I'm just like, Oh yeah, we should have done that. Blah, blah, blah. We didn't, um, you know, I think that, where we are at our career at that time, it's just a music industry shift, you know, from, Mm -hmm. from materials as in like CDs, right. Best buy and all that. Oh yeah. The way that we digest music now is like, it's iTunes, Spotify, Spotify title. It's rare that people actually have a hard copy of, of whatever it is. Yeah, and that's the, now it's like, Oh, I have the vinyl of it. Yeah. You know, like yep. That's what, yeah. that's the hard copy that they go for. Like, yep. yeah. um, but like back then, Guilty I mean, for, for, yeah, for our career, it's just like, kind of like in this, like, we don't know what the, where it's going kind of thing. I think that if we were in today's age, I don't know, because like, think about it this way, how many bands get, an end cap or in a music store opposed to how many independent bands can put it out by themselves. So like Mm -hmm. there's just more bands and more talent and more of this, whether people would have liked it or not. I, I I don't have to say for that, but I mean, I think it's, to be honest with you, I think it's way harder now probably to break because, uh, because of that, because like, yeah, I could sit, I could sit in my house and I could do this. And if I know the right, you know, protocol, I could upload this to all these major things and then I could, you know, promote it. I mean, I think what a label does now ultimately is that they just like promote it's access it. Really. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like if you look at all these bands now, like YouTube, Bon Jovi or whatever, like there's this interaction with their concerts and there's like, mm-hmm. you have to sign up for the, you have to pay money to get on this special list of release material and all the this other stuff. Kind of stuff. Yeah. And, and like all the shows now have that like premium package meet and greet with the band um yeah. you know all this other stuff so like the i don't feel bad for the record companies because fuck them they've been raping people for years but yeah. like but now it's just like more and more you know independent stuff so like as a struggling artist i think it's harder as a you know somebody that's already been around for a long time i think it's probably easier for them to like have a more um interactive you know Thing with their fans but mm-hmm. i think our band you know pe- if people like it they would have liked it then now wherever i mean people still show up i mean yeah. and you know so like very fortunate for that i think that we're going to do a release at some point as i told you guys on the phone we have uh, two songs recorded um, okay. but you know we'll see where it goes i don't have the answers all those answers okay um, so there is new music but we're not we don't there know there is Cool. We don't know. I mean, yeah, there's honestly between everyone that's listening now. Yeah. The songs are done two of awesome. them at least. We were going to wow. do an EP and, mm-hmm. uh, but like I said, Steve moved to Chicago and it's like it's Steve, hard. the way our recording process is, is, uh, you know, when we wrote 
if these shoes could talk, Andy and Steve would sit in Steve's garage and like just bang the hell out of shit and come through shit. Or Andy would sit at home writing the guitar shit and then they go to Steve and I would sit in because I was the new guy. And like when you have a new job, you're like, I got to know everything, man. I got to hang out, talk, blah, 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 chip in a little bit here or there. And, uh, you know, and then Jay and I would sit down in a room on a computer hovering over each other and be like, I like this, I don't like this, blah, 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 this, this, that, you know. But Steve doesn't, uh, you know, he's not around to do that stuff. And Andy, like, has been gone, gone for so long. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, He did write some of the songs on Phoenix, so uh, there's a Andy? few crazy. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he ended up leaving and then coming back to do a couple tours. We did like an all-time low tour and he did another tour. And then like we sat and wrote a couple songs uh, together. But, um, you know, right now it's just like, you know, Steve is kind of doing his own thing. And like we've been playing shows without him. But like in terms of the writing, it's like, you know, he's a huge part of the sound. Yeah, you know, definitely. Go for, so where Jay and I are people. just like, yeah, Jay and I are just like, uh, you know, I mean, I write music all the time. He does. We'll send it back to it and forth to each other. Like, hey, what do you think about this? I like this. I don't like this. I think you try. You're trying really hard to sound like Green Springsteen, and you're and you just don't you sound like shit. <laughs> really, man? He's like, yeah. Baby, man, we're all born to run. That's right. And I'm just like, you know what? Fuck you, dude. But you know what? I, I it, now that you mentioned Springsteen, I do see a similarity between the way that you guys try and play your shows and make a connection with the fans. That's yeah. something that he's always been really big on. That's something that he is awesome at, and we just try to maybe you know. It's, you it's see that in his music in videos because it's always like uh, re absolutely. concerts almost. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, you know, maybe our next video that we do, we have to just do that classic live video. Uh, yeah, pull concert, Courtney Cox you know? out of the crowd, and <laughs> absolutely. Even in the eighties, like you know, uh, he just said, "Who knew?" Courtney Cox was going to be friends and, and, and yeah. that stuff. So like, right. you know, so like it's hard to write new music if the guy is in Chicago and like living, you know, he works at the nighttime. We work in the daytime and oh, yeah. you know, the time so. difference. Yeah. Or wait, are yeah. they, are they East coast or is he an hour behind them? He is in Chicago, but he does like, he works in restaurant land. So like oh, restaurant yeah. land is like, I work on the weekends and at nighttime. My job is to make everybody who has a day off, have the greatest experience ever so they come back yeah. so and i visited him a few times out there and he's doing a great job you know he's very he's got that look johnny football usa like <laughs> you no know, i eat corn you know american cheese and a drink <laughs> uh you know so i mean when it happens it does i mean the two songs are recorded i think that they sound probably like some of our greatest songs yet nice. um i mean not to be like oh this is awesome whatever but uh i think you you've been so hard on yourself i think you're allowed that at least once yeah so i mean yeah i, th I mean when people hear them it's kind of like it has the just runner pop sensibility but it's like kind of hard like say Osin or just like story of the year or the cool. use or something. i mean our music has kind of always been like that anyway to begin with like you know at our concerts it's like yo do not when I say dude bros, I don't mean it as a negative slide or whatever, but it's just like guys that go to the gym and pump, you know what I mean? Yeah, and yeah. love our shit. And like, yeah, dude, like we're well, going it's good to know your audience. high energy. Yeah. We love the high energy stuff, but we also, I mean, Jay and myself are a little bit sensitive, you know? So we yeah. like to a couple of romantic songs here and there and, uh, yep, yep. you Deeper, know, more emotional. Yep. Yeah. I mean, for me, before I joined, I was just like, you know, I, I like the Beatles and like, I like classic rock and like Burt Bacharach and I, you know, I love piano and that kind nice. of stuff. And, uh, you know, to join a band that's just like pop punk or stuff like that. I mean, I listened to like the Ataris and, uh, I like the early Blink-182, but at that time I was like four or five years older. So like I grew up on grunge, you know, yeah. like, or, mm -hmm. or, uh, Brit pop or whatever. So like, uh, the song I played at the beginning of the show is No Shoes and Beauty. Like, that's like a, me trying to sound like Noel Gallagher, ultimately. It's just kind of like this, like, you know, emotional love song. And it kind of doesn't fit with anything on our record, to be honest with you. It's kind of like... It's definitely outside. more ballady. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. And I think that's what sets you apart too, though, is that like there is that variety in all of your records, honestly. Like, you know, like Payback, when that one came out, it just was like, oh, it seemed like an ode to your song. You know, you know like, it's funny that you say that because possibly later on I might play that one. But oh. uh, no, but yeah, absolutely. Like for that song, Payback, you know, uh, same thing. Like I said, Jay's an emotional guy. He's actually more, way more emotional than I am. I'm controlled emotion. He is just like this uh, emotional outburst kind of guy. So, <laughs> well, you know, yeah. Ooh, is it true that your first record was like a lot of, based off of a bad relationship you had? I always heard that, and I wasn't sure. Yes, he says that all the time at our shows. Uh, yeah. I, I look. Uh, how do I put this into words? <laughs> uh, Where's this going? <laughs> no, no, I, I know where it's going. It's just like how to put I it thought, delicately. I, talk, I talked to him before because I know that I, I wanted him to be on the show, and mm-hmm. uh, he's just like, "Hey, man, I'm I'm citing my house because he's yeah, busy more. man, busy man." Uh, so I was just like, "He's like, let me think about it. I have to talk to Shannon. We're going to a christening or some, so, you know, adult, <laughs> super, yeah, super adult shit, adult life." Right? Yep. Uh, and I was like, well, all right, I'm, I'm not going to harass you about it. If you want to do it, it's super easy. If you don't. Okay. Uh, but anyway, yeah. During our first record, he was in high school. Maybe he graduated, you know, or whatever, but he had a relationship and just like, uh, being in a band or whatever, it's the same thing. You're in a relationship and then your relationship is the road. Or the band, you know? Yeah. And uh, ultimately, that's kind of where I was at, you know, with him. And, you know, she was a nice person, nice girl, whatever. But, like, even for myself, I said I was like in a relationship for six or seven years or something like that. Like, you know, it's sacrifice. It's all about sacrifice. I'm going to leave. And, like, you know, when you're 18 to 21 or whatever, you want to be with, you know, the person that you love or whatever. Like, Mm -hmm. Some people, it's their first love. Some maybe, you know, maybe some people are serial daters. I mean, for me, that wasn't the case. I mean, I had a girlfriend before that, and then I, I was in like a super long relationship. For him, that was his. You know, he dated beforehand, but but she was like, you know, his love. Yeah. And uh, and when you you're on stage and you're playing songs, your ego gets so big, and you're like, all these people love me. They love my songs or whatever, but this girl doesn't love me. So like he poured out his heart for a lot of these songs about her, you know? Yeah. And I mean, to be fair and honest, he wasn't the, the greatest boyfriend. Let's be honest. I mean, you know, he was kind of a, a douche. He when was you, definitely when you're young, douche. especially when, you know, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you make mistakes. I've been you. there. Yeah. yeah. I mean, when I went to school, there was an English teacher that described it as young, dumb, full of cum. Yep. And I mean, it sounds super <laughs> crude. Heard that. <laughs> it's, it's so crude, but it's so true. It's just like you're this young guy raging with hormones and all this other <sighs> crap. And like, oh, you guys are so fucking great. Yeah, you're the best thing ever. And like, yep. you don't believe it, but sometimes maybe you do when you're like in a room and there's a bunch of hot babes and they're like, I like you. I mean, <laughs> that didn't happen to me, but for him being the guy who's standing in the center, like, you know, uh, I, you know, I could see it. So like, you know, it's struggling with that. And yeah, like our first record, even probably some of the songs on our second record are about her too. You know, I mean, yeah. they, they broke up and then there was a period that they went out again and then they, you know, kind of just like, you know, some people does, just don't like that. Does she lifestyle. know she inspired an album and a half of material? Trust me, I'm sure with him, he was just like, One of the best albums to ever come out of New York. <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure that he definitely let her know. I mean, this yeah. is before smartphones. This is like the... Well, uh, you know, so I'm sure that you nine her or whatever. Yeah, I definitely remember her. you guys on MTV and you, I think it was you that actually said, uh, you were talking about she broke my heart, so he broke his jaw. And uh, you were like, yeah, like talking about how that incident occurred on MTV. Yeah. And I was like, oh shit, burn. <laughs> so if she ever saw that, she was probably like, fucking yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, maybe she was flattered by it. I don't know. I mean, he got the, the title from... Uh, I think it, it was like a football movie. I don't know if it was Friday Night Lights or it was. Okay. Uh, no, no, I'm sorry. Varsity Blues, like James okay. Renderby. Really? Yeah. yeah. So I guess there's some line in it and one of the, there's like a larger guy in it. I didn't see the movie, but he told me about it. And he said yeah. something along the lines of that title. And then um, 
Yeah, and then he. It's a, just, it's a great title oh for the God, song. That song <laughs> yeah. is so hard too. I He's, love it. You know, yeah. I mean, when we first started, he would, he and I would like go back with lyrics and go back and forth. But the longer that we started writing together, I was just like, I'm a cliche writer, dude. I say love and blue and all the cheesy shit. Like, and he's always super creative. You know, he's just a he's more of a writer than I am. I'm just like when I hear a song, I hear the melody, and that's what that brings me into it. The words don't mean much. Yeah. Uh, but with him, he sh- it's like almost the opposite. I mean, he has this great sense of melody. Are you saying the words don't mean a thing, but you'll say them anyway? So that's right. <laughs> exactly. That's right. And that line is, is a microcosm of how I feel about song lyrics. I mean, uh, I just want to, I want to feel what you're saying. Whatever you're saying, I want the voice and the passion of, of how you're singing it to, to go with me. But he is like, a book nerd and I'm so I mean he is a kindergarten teacher but I am mm-hmm. um, he should be an English professor because he's like very talented with you know just seeing a story and all that stuff but you know for our first record yeah absolutely all the all the songs are pretty much about her and then like some of the songs you know that I wrote the lyrics for are about the same thing ultimately in a relationship yeah. touring and then it ends up breaking up because you know my it's either have a choice your dream or you know somebody that you love and you know it's yeah it's good i mean that's great material right like the, yeah oh my god it's yeah. life it's relatable too yeah, dude yeah. yeah everyone gets dumped or is dumping somebody or, or, or has it, to make a choice yeah yeah or is super excited about you know whatever so and it's cliche, man, but I've got to say, like, I, I know for a fact your music has helped me through some difficult times, and I know there's a shit ton of people out there, including probably Jesse, like, where the same thing, like, you know, like, those melodies, like, in some rough times, man, have just, like, been a release, you know? And, yeah, I'm, I'm, we're very fortunate to have those experiences yeah. and have a creative uh, outlet where people, you know, are encouraging you to get dumped and sing about <laughs> it. So, like, some people just don't have that at all. So, it's yeah, like, yeah. At that time, it was definitely helpful. And then the one great thing about being in a band too is just like you have each other. Like, yeah. So it's just like, oh, you're bummed out about you know who or whatever. Well, guess what? We're going here tonight, and you know who's going to be in town, or blah blah blah. blah. You know, like right. this, uh, you know, a uh, fucking Danny from the audition is coming out. We're going to kick it with him, and you know, we're going to get wild, or like, uh, you know, I mean, like. Trust me, it's it, being on tour and being an, an entertainer, and I use that, uh, you know, kind of like loosely, but uh, but yeah, it's good, and it helped out a lot. I mean, like, hey, you're in a long relationship, and it ended, at, but you're not home alone. You're out with like your friends and family. Ultimately, yeah. it's like, you know, it's great. So, I mean, that record was about her. Some of the songs in the second one were about her, and then kind of just like our viewpoint so far of like our career. And then the songs on Phoenix are kind of retrospect. Phoenix is like Jay's parents moved close to Phoenix Goodyear, but it's just like okay, we were on this record deal. It wasn't rise from the ashes. Yeah, ultimately, yeah. Uh, you know, we signed to the record deal because the manager that we had was just like yeah. yeah. I'm going to manage it. I'm going to do all this stuff. And then like halfway through the record cycle, he left, you know, and the whole reason why we even did the record label is because he was doing it and, you know, yeah. and then he left and then, uh, yeah, man, dark times. And then for that record, Phoenix, we're just like, okay, this is the rise from the ashes. This is going to be great. It's going to be like, you know, we wrote, like we had an idea of all the songs that kind of, we want to ride. We want to run some mushy shit. We want to rock some fucking hard shit. And, uh, nice. you know, I think my favorite songs on that record, though, are probably most of the mushy, mushier ones, except on my own. That was a good one we did with uh, Ace Enders. We did a co-write with him, and he, we went to his yeah. studio, kind of recorded that with him, and then, you know, went and recorded it, um, you know, yeah. with Lou or whatever. Yeah, I gotta say, like, take uh, take me home. Um, better to leave. Like, yeah. away. there's a lot of good like melodies in that, man. Yeah, I love "Take Me Home," and I had absolutely nothing to do with that song. It was like a really this thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I remember. Yeah, trust me, I was so pissed off. I, was so pissed. <laughs> I really <laughs> like, thought I mean, I feel like that was like you were behind that one. Honestly, that's so weird. No, no. I look. I remember. Like I said, by that time, I'm kind of burnt out, and yeah. uh, mm. and they uh, Jay was living with um, Steve. Because Jay's parents moved to Phoenix, like I said, or whatever, before the record and all that stuff. So, like, he was sleeping 
uh, on a couch and they would just like wake up and then write and all this other crap. And uh, I remember they played me the demo for that. And I'm like, motherfucker. <laughs> I was like, what, you don't like it? I was like, dude, this is fucking awesome. I'm so yeah. fucking jealous. I had nothing. To do with it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So like, they're like, Oh, that's good. Right. And I was like, yeah, this should be the single. And you know, it, it, it ended up not being on my own ones or whatever. Yeah. And then, uh, but, um, but yeah, I thought that one was just like, I love that song. Like I, yeah. you know, I love, on my own I, is definitely a just surrender song though. All day. Like that's got that meat to it. That hardness. Yeah. Like stronger that song is, too. Yeah, on my own was um, was supposed to be like another "She Broke My Heart." Yeah, kind of song like when we wrote that, that song. When we wrote that song, it was just more like, um, you know, when you become a songwriter. That sounds so pretentious, but like you kind of like have an idea of like what you're trying to go for ultimately. Yeah. And like our second record, some people like it, some people hate it they're like, oh, they abandon their sound. They don't sound like the their first record. It sounds like more pop shit or whatever. And then like when we did that song, it was just like, well, let's kind of try to like, you know, recreate, you know, She Broke My Heart. So it's like, it's in drop D. So She Broke My Heart is. So. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then uh, on my own is, Sorry. and then no, I get it. And then on my own is like, so it's both in like you know the yeah. same. Thing. It's nice yeah. like these I can't lose, but yeah, sure. I would for open space. So it's like in the same like key uh, of of that song, and then it's just like, oh, it's not the same tempo. It's a little bit lower, but it's just kind of like that same kind of like, yeah, dude, like rock yeah and then yeah. like you know when we play that song people fucking go nuts for it you know so oh, it's yeah. just like you know so it's like kind of that same thing you know so for me i'm just like i like it i i, I always enjoy that one i'm not young anymore so sometimes to sing it it's a little bit more difficult so you have to kind mm. of like you know be i can imagine getting out of yeah breath. but it's still <laughs> It's, yeah, it's either out of the breath bragging. or it's just like, I can't go. To, I mean, my voice, like, the just to entertain voice or whatever, it's like always like a tube amplifier turned up and then it breaks up and then it's like this rasp to it or whatever. But like, before I did that, I was not that kind of singer. I was just like, yeah, yeah love, love, love. <laughs> and now it's like, rah, rah, you know, it's like that, that kind of thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's hard so, so to like. Yeah, and in a studio, you can do like 5,000 times or whatever, and, uh, but then live. I mean, I can do it live or whatever, but, you know. I've, just- I've got to ask you, so where did the, like, rapping part of our work of art come from? Oh, okay. Who came, up with, that? Who sure, came that, up with that, man? That's that an iconic me. thing that I look that's for every time I see you. I see you every time, and I want to see you swing that guitar behind your back, grab oh, that yeah. mic, and get into it. <laughs> it's super easy. Um, I love hip-hop music. When I was younger, I loved Tupac and yes. Dr. Dre and uh, kind of has a biggie feel biggie, to it, biggie? but your life and mine, yeah, okay, the, all that stuff. You gotta be yeah, say it. I like, coaster, bro. yeah, I like <laughs> that music, right? And uh, so a lot of a concert is interaction with the fans and, and stuff like that. And when we did uh, If These Shoots Could Talk, there wasn't really there wasn't a front guy because Jay was on the bass, I'm on the guitar, so like that came about of just like we when we wrote songs originally it was all about the live show. So like, oh yeah, in this part, we're going to do this and somebody's going to go out and do that. So like when we wrote that part, we were trying to be like story of the year. Uh, they do like a backflip thing and like they do, you know, they yep. have like things in their set that were like kind of in their song. And like when we did that record, Take It Back Sunday, uh, their first and second record were heavily involved in like kind of like the sound that we were going on story of the year, the used and stuff like that. So with that song, it was kind of just like that idea of like writing a song where in the song itself, there's a, a audience participation where somebody gets in the face of it or whatever. And like I said, I mean, I love, I love to be entertained. So like that part is just like, yo, I fucking got this dude. Like I love professional wrestling. I know how to, talk to a crowd or get involved in you know that so yeah. 
with that song, it was just like, yeah, I got this. And then I just kind of like scribbled some, you know, shit out. And then I did it. And then we were in like Steve's garage and I did it. And they're like, yeah, that's fucking awesome. Or it was like nice. something along those lines. And then we did it. And then like we kind of, we did it a few shows. And then like it got like this to that. I might have tweaked a couple things here or there. But then that was, you know, that's what happened. And it, it turned into that part. And then we did uh, the ASC demo. Uh, with John and Clara, who we ended up doing the record with afterwards. Um, and then he was just like, you might want to change it to do this one part here. Um, we well, say one thing and then there, cause there's a, a call and response later on, you know, take a look at yourself. Tell me what do you see? Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, whether they, it like kind of goes between the speakers or whatever. And uh, yeah, that's how it came apart. And then like your life and mine, it was the same type of thing. Hey, mm-hmm. I believe Neo was the rapper or the hit R&B singer at the time. And Andy was like, we, I want to do a song like that, you know? And then, uh, and then that's how it really came. He just had the, uh, boom, boom, boom. So, and then I was just like, I could see from across the room, so tearing the story that I, cause it's like super rhythmic or whatever. Yeah. And then, uh, and then he stopped. He's like, "Yeah, that's good, man." And and then I was just like, "If you say so, dude. Like, whatever. Like, you know, a lot of the way that when he and I used to work together, it's just freestyle. It's just like, yeah, yeah." All right, and then it's just like, "All right, do you like?" And then he'll be like, "I like this. I don't like this. Mm-hmm. This sounds good, but I want it to sound more like this." And then uh, it, and that's how we would collaborate together. And then uh, that song, it was just like that. Like we were doing our like we were starting to write for the second record before he like decided to leave and all that stuff. And, uh, for that record, we, the first record we record, we did the pre-production in our friend Ryan's basement and then, and Steve's garage. Then for the second record, we toured around and there was a cycle. And then we went to, uh, Andy's parent, Andy's dad moved and he, he built a house. And then, uh, we started doing the rehearsals in the basement of the house and like before, um, before our practice, because we probably were going on a tour or something, he's like, "Hey, man, I'm working on this, uh, you know, riff or whatever." And it was your life and mine. And he's like, "I want it to sound like R and B and whatever." And then he played that, and then, and then I just did that. And then Jay's like, "Dude, come on, man! Like that shit." <laughs> and I was like, "You know, because Jay's like fucking cool. Like Jay's always been like this cool guy, like tough guy, ta- first guy in the band with tattoos and like you know." <laughs> Mr. Snake just, Bites. Yeah, exactly. He had the fucking things yeah. and, you know, and I'm just like a pop ho. So he and Andy and I were just like, you know, all right. Yeah. It's good to have me. all those elements. The balance. Yeah. 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 And then he did it. And then we like kind of, like I said, the second record, uh, we did a bunch of car rides. So we went in there with, we had the verse, but we didn't have the chorus. And then uh, this guy, John Parker, was just like, yeah, oh, this is great. And then he just sat there on a keyboard, ding, ding, ding. And then we kind of just like hammered out the chorus of it. All right, nothing can stop us if it feels right. You know, I, uh, yep. the guitar's tuned way down or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's but different. you know what I mean? Like, uh, so then we hammered out and then, uh, then we came up with it and then we recorded it. And then, uh, you know, that song, like, I always love that song. That's a personal favorite. The other guys in the band hate it. Like it's really? the least favorite song. That's yeah, so funny. Absolutely. It's the one that caught too, which makes no sense to me. Yeah. You know, and it's like out of all your songs, that's that's like a good song. But as a Just Surrender fan, it's like I would have expected one of your harder songs to catch because like I agree. They're yeah. they're the, they're what I think of when I think of you guys. I think of like post hardcore yeah. emo, like sure, you know, that, that crazy aggressive dueling vocals that like caught my eye in the beginning and like you know maybe again maybe it's like more popularity in like you know a larger audience just due yeah. to the fact that it isn't as as hard of a song yeah, to- probably yeah 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 i i totally agree with that i mean when i think of if i'm stepping out of it they're like well what is some people that i work with right like oh you're in a band what's it like and i'm just like uh i can't describe it well <laughs> music it's like- it's like pop music. <laughs> it's like hard pop music, right? And then yeah. the first song that they look at, it, you know, because they'll just go to YouTube, they'll type Chester and it'll be your like 
your life and mine. And I think that has like the most views or whatever, or maybe mm. they'll go on Spotify and then we'll see that that one is the big one. And then they'll listen to that. Like, yeah, well, you know, and like, for me, I can understand why people like it because it's just a feel good song. It you is. Know? It's just yeah. Like a, and, uh, the ladies other, love it. The they ladies love you. it. I haven't met a girl they, that doesn't instantly fall in love with it, man. Like, yeah, it's it just has like those uh, classic party moments. Mm-hmm. You're at a yep. party, girl or whatever, and then yeah. you know and something happens. Happen. You end up, like, yeah, oh, you end up so you know, and it has like when Andy and I were sitting there, and like you know, he's just like, I want it to be like an R and B song, like where it's yeah. just like super rhythmic, and you're like, it's telling mm-hmm. a story, and like you know, I think that the song accomplishes that. I mean, like trapped it, in the closet, kind of. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, wait, what? I don't know about that. Wait, no, hold on. <laughs> yeah, I mean, people like that song. Um, I like it because people like it, and I just, you know, I yeah. think it, it. I think it's catchy ultimately. And like, what, oh, yeah. for me, when I look for music, it's like what I said before. Like, the lyrics are something, but the way that uh, the music and the singing makes me feel, like the the melody and all that stuff together, is what I go for. And that song kind of just has that stuff. Like, so I mean, whenever we play it, people are singing along to it, and oh, yeah. you know, yeah. But like I said, Jay, that Mr. Bad Boy, even though he's the one that wrote Payback and he's like the biggest little bitch ever. Uh, you know, oh, he's, just like, he's not here he, to defend himself. He could have come on, you know. He it, Look, it's okay. True. I get it. Uh, but he's just like, and, and Steve too. They're just like, I fucking hate this song, man. It is, it's boring live. It's so plain. I'm just like, Look, man, this is the number one song that we did according to the internet. So, <laughs> gotta play it. And, uh, you know, we do, and then they love it. And then they come up, yeah. and love, I love your life and mine. It's the greatest song that you guys did. And great. I'm sure, you know, when you're getting that, that vibe back from the crowd and stuff, it makes it totally different than. For just, me, I just always feel justified. I always feel justified for it, really. I, I just feel like, yeah, I told you guys, you didn't fucking listen. You know, this is the song. Like, you know, and then I have like, good ideas, guys. <laughs> well, I mean, for that song, it's, it always holds a special place because, because uh, like we shot the video, it's all of our friends from our hometown. It's uh, you know, Is that, isn't it at like a little diner? In yeah, the, well? the diner no longer exists. Uh, oh. it, uh, it, it, just like life, uh, it gives way to major corporations, and now it's a gas station and a, and, oh. a, and a Dunkin' Donuts. Um, no, well, but, Dunkin', I mean, America runs yeah, like Dunkin', right? It, it, yeah, <laughs> including Jess Renner. So, um, nope. But, yeah, I mean, like, we had all of our friends from our hometown, and then, like, the, the following areas that go to our chance shows, we just said, hey, we're doing the video shoot. Come, please, blah, 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 blah. And, then, like, a bunch of people showed up. And, like I said, uh, we wanted it to be a hip-hop video, and we uh, – you know, it was like we were trying to go on for that, like the big cars and like yeah, the convertible. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Funny story with that is like a dude that I played softball with. Um, he just has a bunch of classic cars, and I mentioned to him, I was like, "Hey, Rich, uh, we're doing a video, and like, I know you have classic cars. Do you think we could like borrow one for the video? It's just going to be at Adam's Diner." And uh, he's like, "Yeah, whatever you need." just pick one of the cars and like he had the convertible and he just drove it down. It was like probably five minutes from, uh, wow. the, oh, nice. you know, from the place. And he's just like, yeah, if, however long you need, do you need me to start or anything? It's just more of a prop, but like, you know, he's like, okay, here you go. And then he, he just did it. We put like, he, I was like, well, how much money do you want? He's like, we don't want any money. And then I think we like, you know, being poor or whatever, we put like fifty dollars in like the glove compartment. I don't know if you ever went back in there to find it or whatever, but uh, right. we like threw something in there. But like, yeah, it was like a, that video and that song was just like total hometown kind of cooking. We we're just like, yeah, come yeah. out, support, you know, and and like people did. It was, you know, so for me, like they're like, oh fuck that song. Like to me, it gives me like this um, hope and promise of like, oh yeah, well we're, you know, we're on our way to to you know being a successful group yeah so, and, like, yeah you know you guys always uh in like the time that we were following you as fans uh you know it, since we were from the same sort of area you guys yeah. were always kind of around it, it was yeah. you were pretty accessible <laughs> yeah. it seemed like yeah yeah i think that like you know from our area and just music scene in general it's like Everybody is trying to do the same thing ultimately, right? We're trying to get signed. We're trying to, to get a video on TV and all this stuff. And, and most importantly, the, get your music out there. Yeah. And some of the bands in our area just weren't that supportive, realistically. Like, you know, some other bands that had success or whatever um, weren't that 
supportive of it. So for, you know, us or even me in that mindset, I would just be like, be as approachable as yeah. possible. Like you, cause like whether it's music or a, a job, you never know who's going to get promoted. Ultimately, you're never going to know who is the best uh, talent in the room. It could be this guy that's quiet in the corner and it's just yeah. a fucking herb or whatever. But then he has these great ideas and you're like, shit, that's why he's fucking quiet in the corner or whatever. So it's just like mm-hmm. our mindset was just be nice to everybody. You never know uh, who it's going to be. And like, the fans or the people that come to the show, like they're there to support you, like not hanging out with them or not interacting with them. And it's the worst thing that you could do because it's like, okay, maybe you create this illusion. Like, Oh, they're so cool. They're so unattainable. I, I have to go and see them again. Or it could be like, that guy's super nice. I'm going to hang out with him and like, you know, or just like chill and like whatever. So that, that was always yeah. our opinion of yeah. you guys from like the interactions that we've had. I mean, yeah. Yeah. We've yeah. hung out with you guys, all of you over the years, like in ridiculous ways. Like, uh, I do have, so we're in like sin. I do have the yeah. picture, Matt. Yeah. I was going to say, I have yeah. it right here. Oh, do you? Shut up. Yeah. Let's see that shit. Come on. This is awesome. This is yeah, a little yeah, blast guys, from Alex. the past. That's yeah. okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. This is Let old. Screen share. We were at the uh, release party for at Best Buy. You guys played a live show. Oh, I, I do happened remember to that. get a bunch yes, of yes. Look, at, look at how fat I am. <laughs> look how fat this kid is. Ah. That is at the Galleria. Yeah. See, you got yeah. thinner. I got fatter. What happened, Matt? I don't know. We reversed roles, man. Oh, that's with Alex, too, like uh, yeah. on the back right with the red shirt. Alex, yep. yeah. Yep. After Andy left, Alex was kind of like the Hawthorne Heights third guitarist guy. Yeah. Like, so sometimes he would play a third guitar, and then sometimes he would play the bass, like, like so Jake could disappear or whatever. Um, <laughs> He was in the band park. He was a good dude. Yeah, dude, I got to tell you also. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we all get larger uh, with time. Our metabolism slows down. Not so. this guy, baby. I got slimmer. Yeah, he got, he got healthier. I'm just getting fat. I have a, I have like an office job for the most part. I know. I do. I do too. And I gain. I, lo- I just recently lost 50 pounds and because uh, I was living that office life. It's like I'm yep. in air conditioning. There's snacks. Yep. You know, I can go do whatever, and it's just like I'm bored. Free I'm sodas gonna, and shit. Yeah, Terrible. I'm gonna eat two bags of Doritos, and then I'm gonna have a haul cart guy that's five dollars with like yep. two pounds of food oh, baby. <laughs> the whole time. And then on my way home, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna crush like a few beers, and then uh, yep. you know, all of a sudden, like I was just like in a size forty pants, and I was just yeah. Like, I was gonna say my dude. pants are just getting tighter and tighter. I don't yeah. get it. that dryer. And I, and I'm not wearing girl pants or whatever, so it's yeah, like right. that's not what I'm going for. Like at one point, these these pants were like super fit and like they were baggy. I, I swear. <laughs> yeah. No, trust me. I mean, I I that recently happened, and then I got engaged, and I looked at myself. Oh yeah. And then a couple of my coworkers were like, "Dude, what the fuck is happening to you?" I'm like, <laughs> "What do you mean, dude? <laughs> like you're fucking huge." And then I was just like, "Am I?" They're like, "Yeah, dude. Like you have like three chins." And I was like. <laughs> All right. Well, first, I'm depressed. You. I know. No, I mean, I, I, yeah, I did say that. I was like, fuck you, dude. Like, who the fuck are you to say? Like, I'm fat. But then you I. leave my two fucking extra chins alone, man. Yeah. And then I was <laughs> I'm just saving like. saving these. That's right. And then I was just like, and then I looked at myself in the mirror. I'm like, none of your clothing fuck. fits. And like, traditionally, I have like two wardrobes, like skinny Dan, which is like, you know, a 36 and then like fat Dan, which is like a 38. Right. Mm -hmm. And 38, which is no longer fit. And I was like, dude, what is going on? And then, uh, yeah, I was just like, okay. So then I, I was just like, all right, you gotta, you're getting married. I I know a bunch of photos and you're going to have to fix this. And then I, I, you know, I know that we we're not like a nutrition podcast or anything, but how'd you, how'd you end up uh, cutting the weight? Was it just like losing sugar or? Uh, yeah. I mean, it's a combination of things. Ultimately, yep. I have like a rule. I mean, I went, I, you know, I'm a vegetarian or like I'm uh, trying to be a vegetarian. I don't eat meat. Uh, I'll eat cheese. I eat cheese. But like, you know, if you do some research about cheese, like uh, it, some of it's not vegetarian with the way that they make it. Um, yep. Okay. I'm not going to get into that. But if somebody wants to do the research, mm-hmm. look up Rennet. R E N N E T. Uh, it's the way the process that they make cheese. Uh, some of oh. it, it use animal enzymes. Like, yeah. uh, I'll just give a, a brief synopsis of it. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, when the, for the longest time, you know, thousands of years, the way to make cheese is uh, you kill a calf, and the enzymes in the stomach what break down the mother's milk separates it from curds and whey. So the animal has the milk from the mother. 
and then they drink it and then it um and then it separates naturally through the enzymes in their stomach so like if you have parmesan cheese or like a lot of different cheeses uses that old-fashioned way huh. you know so you know i mean uh Whatever you eat, whatever, do you? Um, but <laughs> that's interesting. You know, though. I didn't realize. Yeah, I didn't so. know that either, man. Yeah. So I didn't think I'd be learning cheese facts from you, but that's all right. Uh, I still eat cheese. <laughs> I don't ask every person, uh, you know, everywhere I eat what the cheese is made of. Is it? And there's like, you know, a different w- processes of making cheese. There's microbial, which is like a an artificial way of separating curds from whey. Like mm-hmm. a lot of whey, you know, whey protein. Yep. Yep. Um, bodybuilders and all that shit uh that's a byproduct uh from curds and whey with the way that they make cheese so like the whey is like the milky the the liquid part of it so the curds okay. are like the cheese curds like if you go to canada and have poutine they have cheese yeah. curds on top uh oh, yeah. i and went then, to school in plattsburgh so i know all about uh poutine, poutine practically, and, yeah. <laughs> practically quarter so, canadian so yeah so what oh, happens yeah, yeah. Is, <laughs> yeah it separates and then um when they make the you know whey protein is they just pretty much evaporate the whey the mm-hmm. the water part and then it turns into powder and then that's what they use or whatever but oh, okay. uh, anyway sorry about the tangent but hey, yeah I'm a, well, I, try, I try to be a vegetarian um and yeah so i also do keto me too baby uh, i went on the that's the, how i lost all my weight yeah, the keto and i just in, instilled the rules of just not eating after a certain time and yep. like I read an article one time with Sylvester Stallone when he was training, I believe, for one of the Rambo movies. And uh, they asked him, they're like, well, what is the, the secret to, to how you get so jacked and cut? And he was just like, I just train like a thoroughbred racehorse. I eat the same thing every day. Uh, I work out at the same time. You know, and for me, like, I, I just eat a thoroughbred racehorse. Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I share the same birthday yeah. as Buster Stallone too, so I have this. Oh wow! Uh, oh weird, Jesus! There's a connection. Know, this weird. Hey, um, <laughs> there you go. Oh shit! And uh, yeah, <laughs> so like, I mean, for breakfast I eat just like two eggs and cheese, and then for lunch I have like a half of a salad, but it's like it's loaded with blue cheese. And yep. uh, and then mozzarella and then kale and then like I change the other toppings that are in it, but it's usually above ground vegetables, not below ground vegetables. Yep. Cause they're, okay. They're and uh, and I just Carbies. don't drink anything. Yeah, and then I just don't drink anything with sugar in it. Yeah. Uh, and then for dinner, it's kind of like I just have a some sort of green and then like a veggie burger or a veggie hot dog or a veggie sausage. And then I just drink ultimately water. I mean, once in a while I'll have like propel or one of these other kind of drinks, but I don't drink too many of them. Um, don't drink yeah, the and calories. <laughs> yeah. I mean, a lot of them are yeah. like exactly empty calories. I believe it's called yep. and uh, carbs, all that and chocolate yeah. milk. Though I just can't like not <laughs> oh, fuck you up. Milk like is old, loaded man. with sugar to, for the process of it. So it's like, people don't realize that regular milk yeah. is just loaded with sugar to make it taste non rancid. You mean yeah, like, don't I don't mean, have to add Hershey's. <laughs> <in> the- <laughs> yeah. So I did that. And I mean, like ultimately I don't eat at past nine o'clock. Um, yep. And then like, it's like super regimented and, I mean, I just keep losing weight and they're like, what? Stop losing weight. I'm just like, I'm not like actively trying to lose it. I just stop yeah. cutting. I, Cause like, I mean, I know eating healthy, like, it sounds like, and it's, yeah, it's a music podcast, but like, yeah, I would wake up, I'd have the same breakfast that I have now, two eggs and cheese or whatever. Then I would go to work Then I'd probably have a bag of chips, a can of soda. Then at lunch, I'd oh, probably yeah. have a pound of halal, you know, whether it's a halal meat or you know eventually i got to falafel because i became a vegetarian yeah, and rice like good. <laughs> so good and then i and it'd be like a pound and a half two pounds and then i'd go back to the office uh, you know an hour and a half later i have another bag of chips and a soda and then i'd go home and there's a wendy's where i live near the ferries and then i'd be like okay i'll just have a big potato or something and then i'd yep. go home and then have a dinner and then after that i would just eat a, a dessert or some a ice cream or whatever and then it was just like why do I eat so much? Is it because like, you know, I just love the taste of food. Am I depressed? And then I was just like, probably a lot of passive eating. Uh, yeah. It's just like, I'm bored. Yeah. Dude, yeah, I got start. some fucking, I got ice cream in there. Yeah. yeah. Fuck it. You know? And then I, That's and then, do. yeah. The and then culture is though in your stomach. It makes you crave more and more, the more you have. Oh, absolutely. It's and, horrible. and then I joined uh, this world of uh, the way that I eat now. And it's just like, I'm not hungry. And then sometimes I forget to eat and it's not just like, I'm like, Oh, I'm cutting corners, man. Yeah. I'm getting ripped. It's just like, I'm not hungry. 
I, yeah. oh, I should eat. I really should eat because I haven't eaten since blah, 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 blah. And then I, I, you know, and then I will eat. But it's just like, yeah, so many highs and lows with the way that I would eat before. It's like, I'm hungry. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. You know, because it's like, yeah. Yeah, I got this rush of energy. And then it's like. Right. Gone. Crash. Yeah. And, and now it's just like. Basis, right? What's that? Now you find it's more even basis of your energy throughout the day, I bet. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. My mind is clear and my energy level is mm-hmm. consistent. I mean, there are sometimes like you know yeah it's natural happens. you're gonna be done but like yeah i mean i described it they were like well why should i do this i'm like to be honest with you like my energy level is consistent i'm not really tired throughout the day i mean if i don't sleep and i you know i mean sometimes i might be tired but compared to where it was like it was oh, like yeah. i was living a bipolar life with my energy levels and now it's like usually pretty consistent you know and yeah, now i've gotten right. used to it so i'm just whatever but like uh but yeah, in the first few weeks of it, I was like, holy fucking shit, dude. Like, this is fucking amazing. Why didn't I do this a long time ago? And yeah. uh, the only hard part about it is I'll go to like a, anywhere to eat. It's yep. always an issue. Uh, I'll go to a barbecue or somebody's house. And since I'm a vegetarian on top of it, it's like even harder. So I like, I have just a, a to-go bag when I go to these places. And like, I always usually have an avocado. Hell yes. On, nice. uh, you know, Best food on, ever. Uh, on standby. And uh, they're like, Really? I'm just like, look, you know, I'm, I'm here for the fellowship. I have food. Yeah. You have some things I can't eat. but You're not inconveniencing anyone else. Yeah, you're yeah. on your own. You're I not know, like, hey, I, you don't have any veggie burgers. What the fuck? You don't go well, slap dude, a hot dog out. Sometimes, sometimes they do have the veggie burgers, but there's like different levels of veggie burgers. And oh, some my God. Like, some of them are like oat-based. And like yeah. oats are like jacked up in the carb land, you know. Yeah. So like some of them are worse than regular burgers for you. Yeah, absolutely. Horrible. So yeah. it's just like, yeah, it's like this one little thing that I, you know, I was at two forty. I'm I weighed myself today. I'm at one eighty seven pounds. So like, oh nice. Yeah, yeah man. Well, I mean, it's been great. Yeah, you look good, dude. It's because I'm wearing a Hawaiian shirt. All right. No, no, I know. I, I will. Well, you no, know. I, yeah. I appreciate. It. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, they're like, well, when are you going to stop? I'm just like. Cause I, I mean, I keep losing weight and I'm just like, I don't really know if I'm going to stop. Like, they're like, well, what's going on? Like, are you okay? I'm, is something wrong? I'm just like, dude, I just don't eat shit. You know, I yeah. don't fucking pile on fucking desserts, you know? Yeah. And I, I, you know, and then I just like, some people eat to live, other people live to eat. So like I used to, you know, fucking eat to live, man. You got to, let's try, let's sample this. This tastes so good. Like, yeah, you know, and then now I'm just like, okay, I eat. Like I have what I need and I don't, like I said, I'm not tired. I can, I mean, I'm ready to go and whatever. So it's just like, I don't know if sometimes people are just like, they're worried about me or if they're just like, they see me losing all this way and they're like, what are you doing? You're, you, you're Karen Carpenter. All right, this is the carpenter story, <laughs> and you have a, a, a eating disorder. I'm just like, well, and Amanda, my it fiance, like you complain about my chins, and then when yeah, <laughs> when I start getting thin, now That's you're right. telling me to eat more. It's like people are just jealous or something, you know. I think it. Uh, to be honest with you, it's just like we're just all programmed, you know, by society to what looks good or what doesn't look yep. good. Somebody does this and you have a, an opinion. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, like with my fiance, like I told her, I was like, I have this way of losing weight and blah, blah, blah. She's like, I don't want you to be skinny like you were a long time ago or you could see your ribs. And I'm just like, look, uh, I have a high metabolism, but like if I lose weight, it's because I'm just, I cut out all the crap. And then, you know, we eat dinner together, you know, mostly every night. I'm just like, you see what I eat, right? She's like, no, I didn't understand before, but now I, I do understand. Like you sometimes eat more than I do, but it's just the, the stuff that you eat is, you know, Better. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Opposed to you just consume like, consume it know. instead of just sit the, collecting it as fat. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I'm eating fat, but my body is turned into a fat burning machine. Exactly. So it's just like, instead of, you know, just putting the fat to the side and just looking for that sugar, yeah. you know, yeah. so. Yeah, man. I mean, it's good. Uh, you know, I feel good about it. You know, everything is, everyone does their own thing. And like for me, I, you know, I just feel really good. So, yeah. and I mean, I it doesn't work right. for everybody. I've had people that say they can't do it, you know, but whatever comes up in it. But I mean, yeah. I for um, my side, it worked wonders for me. And uh, yeah. I've never felt better than keto. Yeah. Nothing but good things from people who've done it. So, yeah. yeah. And I'm a musician, so I'm already fucking crazy. So, like, <laughs> You know, they're like, how could you fucking live in a van for like, you know, five years? Because I'm nuts, dude. 
<laughs> they're like, yeah, I mean, like, you live in a van, and I'm six two, six one and a half, or whatever. Like, my knees are like, you know, this is my my knees bending, and I'm sleeping in a bed, you know, yeah, or curled. not a bed in the back seat. They're like yep. constantly curled up, and like, you know, shit weather and i'm fucking hanging out with chain smokers so they're constantly smoking like yep. you know if you have to be crazy to do that and i'm just like wired that way like you yeah. know so oh, yeah. it's easy to me and plus it's like i have no control over a lot of things in my life and uh you know you do have control of what what you eat and and yeah. stuff like that so it's like to me the like the first week is the hardest because you're like going through like this sugar withdrawal, but now oh, it's just yeah. kind of like super easy. It's just like, all right, yeah, I want that because a fucking cannoli or an eclair is so fucking delicious. But right. it's you like, know, well, it's, Joe, like, it's like Joe Rogan talks about mouth feel. That's all it is. Yeah, like, mouth, yeah. Mouth you're doing food. so much damage for that like fucking couple seconds of mouth pleasure, and that's it. It really is. I mean, because like after you eat it, like you, it sits there. Feel like, like shit. Yeah, yeah man, most of the time, I do. man. Most I'm not time. trying to like hurt people's feelings or offend them. Nah, or something like that. It's, it's not like, for I'm everybody. Just saying, but I'm just saying, do you like? For yeah. me, it worked, and like right. I, like I told you, I'm a slut when it comes to food. Like I just, like, <laughs> eat to I've live or live to eat. Just sucking now, down corn dogs, huh? Oh, <laughs> Dude, yeah. If one's good, three is better. You know, yeah. so oh, like that's what she said. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so I'm just like, yeah. Now I'm just like, okay, like you know. And then like I said, my energy level is better. And I was like. When we did our last show, I was super afraid of a lot of things because um, because I did I've never done a show in this kind of diet or whatever, you know. So like, and I was doing research, and some people were like, "Oh, your energy level after a certain amount drops off." So like, you have this energy, but that like, physical. yeah, yeah. And we like for our last show, we did like I said, we were supposed to do one hidden in plain view, but the guy broke his. Uh, wrist or something like that and then we weren't gonna do it and the venue was like oh come on please let's do it we're gonna lose a bunch and you know so being the terrible businessman that just and her are we're like <laughs> all right fuck it let's do it and uh so we did the show but beforehand i was losing my mind i was just like because you know i i i mean it's almost like i'm wearing a new suit or whatever like i don't know what this body can handle doing this and all this other crap and then uh i did the show and it's like any other show i was like oh, you're just crazy man like fucking yeah. chill the fuck <laughs> out and uh it's totally you're like fun. telling you're telling your bandmates beforehand i might blow the roof off this thing i'm eating new stuff i don't know what's gonna happen i could collapse <laughs> yeah. on stage this whole place could go up in flames i never tell them anything because i know how they are <laughs> yeah it's jay especially like dude what the fuck man and i'm just like what do you mean he's like now I'm gonna suck. I'm like, well, what the fuck are you talking about? You're just do you, dude. More <laughs> yeah. So I mean, it, it like always, it ended up being fine. It sounded nice. fine. I mean, unfortunately, my band plays way too fucking loud, and uh, so like you know, the the sound was the sound. You know, it didn't matter yeah. anyway. So nobody, you know, it was the typical show. People enjoyed it, and afterwards, people were like, great, yeah, blah blah. blah. And I'm just like you got to be nicer to yourself, man. You know, like chill <laughs> yeah. out, dude. Like, you know, relax it. But there were a few moments. People, like said, The people love you. You're, you're going to be your own hardest critic, you know? Yeah. I just want the best for them. You know, they're paying their money to come see us. You know, I, I did, uh, you know, if you don't, you know, set the bar for yourself, like, you know, you, you want, I, I want to, them to leave with a happy experience. Not just right. like, cause like I said, the show with hammer and you know, he shows up and then somebody drugged him, meaning, he took pills and then went in the closet and passed out. So he uh, drugged him. Yes. I mean, that's, yeah, that, that's what Somebody happened. Drugged he, that's what we've come to. He drugged it. himself and he's like, uh, yeah, I probably did, man. Whatever. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I mean, it's whatever. Like, I mean, it's, you know, um, but for me, like, cause I was, you know, you, me, everybody else, we go to a show. We want to, we want to sing the songs that we love and we want it to sound good and all this other stuff. And like, you know, yeah, so, you know, that was my mindset. But, I mean, it ends up it ended up working out in the end, and my body still was able to, you know, sing the songs. However, you know, the songs are I'm, – I'm 36. So, like, I was singing those songs when I'm 23. And, like, Led Zeppelin or those guys with the guys who sing super high, they always change it later on in their life. I'm like, now I know what these fucking guys had to do because, like, you know, before I could be screaming at the top of my lungs or drink as much alcohol as I want, the next day I'm fine. 
And now it's just like, oh, there's like way so much work that goes into even just being able to, you know, to get there. So like, yeah, you know, for me, I put a lot of stress on myself, but you know, I mean, it's people are paying for it. So, you know, I wanted it to sound good. And if I didn't, it just meant that I didn't care. So, okay. you know, yeah, yeah, that makes sense, man. Oh, right. Yeah. It's good to hold yourself with that standard. Cause I mean, you see acts fall off all the time because they start getting sloppy and you see them and you get upset as a fan. You're like, ah, shit. I saw them two years ago. They were nothing like this. And it's like, when you guys, every time I see you, you're fucking better, man. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah. I mean, I, I I appreciate that. We tuned the guitars down a little bit. We did a rehearsal for like back, I guess it was for the the first show that we did in July last uh, year, 2017. And I was just like, we got to tune these guitars down. They were like, what the fuck are you talking about? Blah, blah, blah. You know, that sounds like shit. And then I was like, just do it. Let's do one or two songs this way. And then uh, if it doesn't sound all right, then, uh, you know, whatever. And then uh, Jay, Jay was so against it. And then we did it. And he's like, oh, yeah, dude. Oh, totally. <laughs> Sounds great, you know. Uh, it's it's wanna, at least worth trying new ideas to see. Yeah. How, you know, I think so. I mean, if you see Ozzy or any of these other bands, they all do it. You yeah. know, I mean, just like. Uh, so we did and, it. And, um, when you're saying tune down, it's just to match the octave on your voice, or I think uh, well, like okay. Uh, you play half step down normally, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So That's it's like I've played your songs. Then. Yeah, yeah, it is that. So it's like this. It's normally at that. So it's normally, but we just tune it a half step down. So, so it's, I mean, it's not really that much at all, but, but for your voice, it makes it a little easier to keep with, right? For that high note, Mm -hmm. you got to turn it down. I mean, it's still going to break up and like, uh, like I made the, the, uh, reference to like a tube amplifier. There's a certain point on it Mm -hmm. where the voice breaks up. Mm -hmm. Our voices aren't high enough to, to make it that way anymore. But if you tune it down a little bit, I mean, there's still going to be play with your natural voice to make it give it that uh, scratchy but still uh, yeah. a note kind of thing. And, yeah, I mean, none of us are uh, super athletes or whatever. So, like, I mean, and, like, your voice, you have to constantly do it over and over. It's like, you know, it it it's a muscle ultimately and it changes over time i mean like you said yeah. you've been going for over a decade now oh, absolutely as you so, become yeah. and as honestly, you become older men it gets deeper and that's right I noticed you it know? more with jay especially man because jay was so oh. young when your first album came out so he sounds yeah. so young and then like you go to like the next album and it's like oh he's a man now yeah i still <laughs> think on our second album he sounds like a woman and that, like, <laughs> it's cause, like there's certain songs on that record they're like who's the girl singing with you i was like uh Oh there's, shit! Uh, there's one it, song. There's a girl in do, that song, though. Have, yeah, yeah. No, okay, no, uh, I just want to make sure. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I know uh, he does the part live. He does the girl. Yeah, part. he does it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's what it. If you look like you need some company. Yeah, uh, I. It's the name of the song, I escape it. Um, but yeah, we had a girl sing that one, but he sings it live. But there's other songs where he just sings like a higher part. But you know, he has a very. Uh, higher voice so like people are like uh, you know uh who's the so girl singing still alive. that's what it is yeah, yeah and uh yeah we called it Haley's comment in the beginning because we, we did a tour with paramore we're like oh maybe we can get Haley to sing on so oh, like man. we wrote it and uh we they're were playing like, oh, here tonight like, i might go see them actually oh do it yeah that's i mean awesome. it's, yeah. it's funny yeah we play with them uh, we did like uh, it, it wasn't really a tour it was like five shows in a row it was like paramore my american heart us and i think maybe another band or whatever but like yeah we did some stuff with them and then like we disappeared to go write our other record we did like a show with them at cbgb's and like some other shit or whatever and then like i don't know like maybe a few years ago they're like yeah we played at cbgb's a long time ago and it was like this shithole blah blah blah. and i was like oh yeah that's the the show that you played with us or whatever and like um so like when we wrote that song it was just like oh uh you know and then it was a girl part but then we ended up having a, a mutual friend who ended up singing it anyway but like jay to my original point uh, he has a higher voice but now he his voice isn't that high so yeah. it's just like tuning them down and just like and it's almost like running too you're singing you're just like <sighs> <sighs> and uh Jeez. yeah so we tune it down and it sounds better i wanted to tune it down a full step but I was at, you know, they were like, no, 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 half a step is fine, whatever. So, um, it works. It sounds good. You know, if we didn't do that, trust me, it would sound way worse. So, uh, 
That's you know, cool that you're adapting and changing and stuff. You kind of have to do that to survive. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. With, yeah. with, to be successful, if you're, you know, I mean, if you look at all the successful artists like Paul McCartney or, um, like I said before, U2, Madonna, or any of these Foo Fighters, they're constantly adapting, you know, and changing or whatever, whether it's tuning your guitars or doing different style of music. I mean, for us, I just want to be able to play a show and sit, be able to sing, ultimately. You know, if we yep. had it all the way up like it used to be, that we couldn't get through like three songs without being like, <sighs> or just oh, yeah. like sounding super flat or, or, or it's so, I mean, I think it sounds good. I mean, you know, I wish we could practice more and get more super involved with it, but I mean, we've always been like kind of just like a rock band anyway. So it sounds, you know, I think it sounds pretty good for the most I part. It I mean, too, man, it's fantastic. <laughs> <That's for> it. <laughs> man. So you got some shows coming up, uh, one in August 24th, right? Yes. At the Bowery ballroom, uh, and that one is going to be a fun one. That'll oh, be man. like, I guess, the year anniversary of the show that we did, the first show in a long time that we did. Um, and yeah, we played at the Bower Electric, the last one, and this one will be at the the Bower Ballroom, the actual ballroom itself. Yeah, so. yeah, it's a nice, nice. theater from what I saw photos of. Um, yeah. It looks like it's going to be a good show, man. You're playing with Aaron West and the Roaring Twenties, which is a really unique like country rock sound. Like, it's yeah, I mean, cool, like, it's really cool. Yeah, I think it's going to be good. I'm a little nervous about it, but like I said, if you haven't been able to tell, I'm a worry word through the whole interview. <laughs> and then and then everything turns out fine. Yeah, <laughs> It usually does, but uh, like I said, if I don't worry about it, then there's something wrong. If I'm just like, it's going to be fine, <laughs> usually uh, uh, it doesn't. It turns into a shit fest. And then, so uh, keep worrying until it's over. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like I said uh, before, it's just like, I worry, I worry, I'm afraid there's going to be something horrible happens. And then like we hit the first chord and then like I said, I look out, people are having a good time. And then I'm like, dude, you are fucking weird, man. I enjoy this shit, you know, yeah. like, and then I do. And I mean, I can't do it the whole time. Cause I'm like thinking when I sing and like all that stuff, but mm -hmm. yeah. And then I, I play, we play and, and then it ends up being great. Not great, but you know what I mean? Like, and then it, it's just like, Oh yeah. You've done like, I don't know. I don't know how many shows you've done. Let's just say 500. You've done 527 shows. Like, come on, dude. Like, you fucking have done this for a while. You're not a spring chicken. Like, stop being a little bitch. But, <laughs> you know, I'll always be a little bitch, unfortunately. I'm a mama's boy. So, you know, I'm just always... So, uh, someone's got to worry, right, you know? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> right. the other guys, are like I said, uh, whether it's Josh or whether it's Steve, you know, I mean, like, someone's got to worry. Someone's got to be the, the, the mother hen or whatever. I was going to say, Dan's the dad here. He's keeping them... <laughs> yeah, I am usually. I mean, because, like... In our early days, like I said, people just care about getting wild, crazy, drinking, whatever. So uh, I would kind of drink with them, but too, I'd be like, okay, I can't do this much because I got to, you know, I got, I still got to perform. So like and yeah. now I don't have any of pre-show and post-show <laughs> crap to go on. So it's like, you know, I think that show will be really fun. Uh, I'm looking you know. forward to it, man. And then I think in December we're playing with... Um, Hidden in Plain View. That's right. Yeah, we were supposed yeah. to do some shows with them, and somebody broke their wrist. Uh, but this one is going to be in Philadelphia, I believe. Yep, Underground yeah. Arts in Philly, Saturday, yeah. December fifteenth. That should be nice. a good one, right around Christmas. So take the one that you love or hate or whatever. That's a Christmas present. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. yeah. Be yeah. edgy. Bring the one you hate. Yeah. That's right. It, make, it's, we're make tough it guys. Get get that coworker you you really dislike at work and be like we're going to a fucking concert. <laughs> one of my coworkers went to see me. You know, I, I, I had some of them. Co we played at Underground Arts. I guess there's two rooms there or something. I think we played there. I'm not sure. We played some place. No, no, no. Maybe it was the Foundry. I think it was called. But either way, uh, yeah. Some of my coworkers commute from Philadelphia to. Uh, they come once a week because I work in a sales office and they're sales guys, so they're always on the road or whatever. Anyway, they came to and see me at the show. They're like, "Dude, who the fuck was that guy on stage? Like, this is uh, that's not the Ed I know. You know, <laughs> you know I'm a desk guy. I'm pushing yeah, pencils, right? Oh, blah, 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 you know." <laughs> Yep. so they're like it was crazy because you look so comfortable there but you don't seem comfortable sometimes at work and it's like well in another life this is you know what made me happy so like you yeah know, making money makes me happy now but being on stage you know without a dollar to my name and just like performing that's like the ultimate rush the ultimate high the ultimate enjoyment so like you know yeah it's great that you found that. Do it. Yeah, a lot of people don't find that in their yeah, lives, man. Yeah, yeah. Trust me. I mean, I always say this, and it's super morbid. I'm like, but if I die tomorrow, ultimately, like I know, 
that I live life and I che- uh, chased the things that I wanted to do. And like, you know, I did, did what I wanted. I mean, did I reach all the goals that I wanted to? No, but I did reach a lot of them and you should live life that way. Like, don't be afraid to pursue your dreams, your passions, you know, because you get to a certain age, like, like I'm where I'm at now, I'm getting married and all these things like going on tour and like trying to start a band and create one and do all that stuff. I couldn't do that now. And I, I mean, I don't think I'd want to now, but uh, do it. Like if you're young and you want to want to do it, do it. I mean, if you want to be a photographer or a painter, just constantly continue to do it over and over. Don't be afraid of what other people say. Just, you know, do it. Cause at the end of the day, I know for me, I did it, you know, yep. to, to a moderately yeah. successful aspect. I mean, it's been, I don't know how long. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm on a podcast <laughs> right now reliving, you know, my glory days. And uh, so, like, <laughs> you know, for me, you guys asked me to be on the show and I was just like, oh, absolutely. We asked Jay, but he's a diva. So, uh, <laughs> he's, well, he's, he's, he's a busy he's, guy. We know he's going to I on. know he's going to listen. He's his house to, up. Trust he's me, he's going to listen to this. He's like, fuck you, dude. Why the fuck did you say oh, that? Well, I'm just well, like, well, well Jay, Jay, Jay we don't mind go, that buddy. he's not here. Here you go. You should have been here, dickhead. So, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll extend the olive branch and say he's coming. You know, yeah, I'm sure yeah. He, Whatever he wants, it's up yeah. to him. Yeah, I know, yeah. but he's not going to have colored lighting in the background and a, a <laughs> telescope that has a microphone on it. So, oh, is that a telescope? Man, yeah. I was wondering. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> is that it really? Is... Oh, that's oh my awesome. God. It is that's, a... A good, that's a good Damn. looking one. I was wondering. I was like, wow, he's got a really a weird slide set up. I for thought it was light. an easel. <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, it's it's almost the same thing, but uh, yeah. the hey, same idea. That's awesome. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, my shot is not the same that it was, but oh well. Yeah, no problem. Um, yeah, so, so you know, a musician, a vegetarian, and a stargazer, huh? <laughs> that's that's right. I mean, I live on a balcony, and we have uh, this time of year the moon isn't in sight, but we have Mars and a couple other things. So. Venus, Jupiter, Saturn. There were I, I actually last week went and uh, looked at a couple. I, I have a much smaller telescope than the one yeah. you have. Besides, I, doesn't matter, right? <laughs> I've been told. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, yeah, it does. I mean, for this thing, it's good. I mean, like I live next to the water, so I have like a bridge, the and cruise ships go by all the time. So I just oh wow, like, just, oh you're right in yeah. you're right what in Manhattan on the bay, right? I live yeah. in Staten Island next to the okay. ferry, and I com- yeah my commute is probably I don't know fifty minutes or so. Oh, so, man, okay, that's awesome. yeah, it's, I mean it's but yeah, I live right on the Hudson River. I mean, I grew up in the Hudson Valley. Yep. You know, near the chance. You just shot down the river a little bit. Yeah, (laughs) exactly. So it's like crazy that, you know, I'm so far away, but I'm still close to. Yo, connected in some way. (laughs) That's a weird thing that nobody like understands unless they grew up in the Hudson Valley. Like what that river means. It's how we navigate the area. Like it's absolutely. Yeah. So, when I mean, I, when I moved out here to California, that's what I kept telling people. I'm like, without a body of water, I don't really know north and south and east and west. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And we, I like, I didn't want to move here. We lived like down the road or whatever, and then we we just ended up moving here. And I, once I stepped out and I saw the water, it's like, okay, it doesn't matter. Let's. Uh, this, this is, is where cool. I want to be. <laughs> yeah. This is cool. <laughs> oh man. So, all right, you want to throw out any plugs for Just Render? Where can the people? Uh, yeah, you? sure. I mean, right now our main thing, I guess, is just on Facebook. I'm gonna create an Instagram, and it's been a long time. I have such I a say, large archive. We don't have one, which is the dumbest thing ever. But it it just comes down to us being the worst businessmen ever. Well, I'll tell you, you're hashtagged quite a few times already yeah, on Instagram. A lot, yeah. a lot of people posting Just Surrender posts. Yeah. Yep. So, oh, absolutely. So, I mean, it's a, uh, yeah, I, not because I'm an egomaniac or whatever, but I, like sometimes I'll check the, around the show time. Like, are people yeah. posting about the show or, you know, because it'll, because we don't have one. And usually, like, someone will tag at Jess Render or something and it doesn't show up. So they'll do the hashtag Jess Render. And I look and then, dude, people still fucking know about us. And it's like, yeah. like I said, just, you know, just a bunch of young dudes in this small little village where, you know, my graduating class was less than 100 people. And like, hey, when are you coming to Germany? Hey, when are you coming to Finland? Hey, when are you, wow. coming, to, when are you coming to California? California. Uh, California. California works too. Yeah. Uh, yeah or av- avocado Yeah. 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 Uh, I'm just like, dude, just book it. Like, we'll yeah. have guitar, we'll travel. 
and that's what I usually say. I mean, whether they do it or not, I don't know. But like, I mean, dude, dude we'll play. I mean, as long as like uh, the expenses are paid. I mean, no, it, you know, and it works obviously. But uh, yeah, man, just to play, just to do it is good. I mean, like I said, Facebook is where you can find it. Um, you know, Spotify, title, any YouTube if you want to see some really interesting videos and like a lot of live fashion, videos live. fashion i know the live yeah. videos sometimes i'm like can we take those down like uh <laughs> oh man i love watching them I, no I'll, i mean there's, a, like there's a few good ones i remember we did one show in um long island and it's like after the show the fire marshal shut down the, the show and then and then we just ended up getting hammered and then they opened the show back up so when we played anyway, it sounded like shit. And then uh, we went behind. <laughs> yeah. And then we went behind. Uh, for some reason, we were like, fuck it. We're going to go acoustic. And then we go behind there. And then uh, and then it's behind the venue in our trailer. We're just playing. And then my brother is there too. And he's just like, my brother is a good singer and all this stuff. But he doesn't know our songs. He doesn't listen to that kind of music. And he's just like making shit up. And I'm just like, <laughs> you know, and then like, I'm just like, oh, whatever. Oh, and then fuck. like, I... <laughs> revisit it like 10 years later and i'm just like oh wow this is bad dude but <laughs> I hope this is the first you know <laughs> yeah, yeah i mean this is life this is the yeah. world that we live in you know uh, yeah. every everything is documented good bad and it only makes a uh, noise if it's bad it seems nowadays because nobody wants mm. to celebrate anything good or the good things that we do um yeah but but yeah man i mean it's part of the experience and it's part of the journey that is that just turners on so like yeah man i mean Come to the shows if you can. If not, maybe we'll be technologically advanced by then and like live stream. A bunch of people have asked about that, but that'd be cool. You know, um, it takes out of it though. It's not the same. Yeah, I mean, I just always want uh, you know because a lot of people like our band and a lot of people aren't. They don't live in New York, so yeah, I mean, yeah. maybe it's something that we might do. Maybe by December we'll get into that, but I I don't know yet. So um, other than that, I mean, just. Thank you for listening and jamming. And, you know, if you have any questions or anything like that, hit us up on the, you know, the interwebs. I mean, we're still there. We don't, I don't, I don't go on the Facebook all that much, but like, I mean, around showtime or stuff like that, or I mean, we'll check it periodically or whatever, but you know, I mean, I'm super easily accessible on the internet. Um, the other guys are, so. Yeah, you, you guys know. are all really friendly and easy to talk yep. to. Except Jay, apparently, because he doesn't write uh, back. But. I've talked to Jay so when he's not siding his so. house. Yeah, he's he's yeah. awesome. He always answers me. So no, nah, I know. I, I look. I he's like the little brother that I never had. So like, yeah. He's, oh yeah, I can only imagine. Yeah. If you awesome. don't give him crap, who will? <laughs> That's right. Yeah, exactly. So I mean, he. Uh, no, I love that guy. I mean, to be honest with you, I, I mean, I talk to him probably the most out of the other guys, just because the, uh, you know. He's just, uh, like I said, the little brother I never had. And, you know, the other guys in the band, sometimes I guard up with what they say, what they say but he's just like, fuck you, dude. This sounds like shit. Or, uh, you know, you shouldn't do this or blah, blah, blah. You shouldn't talk to this person because of this. You know, I mean, like, he's always, you love him, hate him. You always know where he stands. And that's, like, something that is, like, super genuine in life that is so hard to find now. So. Yeah. Well, maybe yeah, after hearing this, he'll, uh, you know, be goaded into actually coming on and talking. I think about. he will. I think he'll watch it because, like I said, his ego is so through the roof. He's just going to be like, oh, You could have been right there, Jay, or right there. One I know. One of the other exactly. little boxes. Been on, yeah. <laughs> right down here or, like, below there. Like, he could have. You got a spot for you. You just got to be here. I know. I know. Trust me. He he just is a nervous person, and he was. he explained to me, he's like, I'm going to be like super afraid about like talking about, well, why don't you have any music? You're playing these shows. Why don't you have music? Because people want to hear these answers. Like, Jay, just be honest. Like, I'm going to be honest with you. We don't have any music because like a guy who usually writes the music, you and I do the, the melody and the lyrics and he's kind of like in charge of, cause he's a fucking drummer and he's a guitar player too. He's kind of like, Steve's kind of like Dave Grohl in that double uh, whammy aspect. Yep. Yeah. And, uh, you know, like he's not there and like, you know, he's just kind of doing his thing. So, I mean, I mean, we didn't pull any gotcha questions. I don't think, right? You could have. Yeah. I like I, when I talked to you guys before. You, you can ask anything. You could say anything. Like I'll give you an honest answer. It makes a, a better interview if it's just yeah, so. sure. yeah. Well, we appreciate how open you've been. It's great. Yeah, you've been real. Yeah, like that's right. I mean, uh, somebody might be offended, but uh, well, you know, that's life. You know, that's what okay, I'll get, I'll get over it. Don't worry. I don't think that he will. To be honest with you, I could have said way. <laughs> 
more hurtful or or embarrassing uh, things. But I, I didn't say anything <laughs> that would make his wife mad. I didn't say anything that would make his students mad. Or no, you can get this. Nah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, just don't, <laughs> you know, don't talk about certain things and we'll be all right. So, you know. All the illicit material has been uh, tucked away. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, uh, there's reference to it, but realistically, it's a rock and roll band. So, like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, you, you guys are great, and uh, I, we appreciate that you came on the show. You know, shared some yeah. of your music stories. With oh, us. my pleasure. Pleasure was all yeah. mine. You know, nah. uh, to be able to just reminisce about this stuff because I hate doing it a lot because I make it does two things. One, I always feel like oh, you're living in the past, living the now. You know what I mean? And two, it's just like if I talk about myself all the time, it means that I'm in love with myself and I'm this egomaniac and whatever. So like, to have an outlet to talk about it with you know people that have been through. Uh, my journey with me you know it's just good to share um these stories because i don't i mean i'll think about it like i have a i have a guitar rack with all my laminates and once in a while when i pick up a guitar i look at it, i'm like oh i was here I was, you know but i don't actively like say oh by the way i you know was an international touring musician and i went here and i did this and these be very and, humble i try to be i mean like the less people know the better because mm-hmm. if you if I tell you everything, then there's no mystery, right? Like, yeah, true. Yeah, true. Very true. true. So, all yeah, right. So, well, real quick, for I think we're gonna wrap it up with a wonderful song, right? That's right. Since Jay's okay. not here, I'm gonna sing a song off of our second record. Uh, we're in like soon. It's called Payback. Jay normally sings a song, but since he's not here and I have a better voice than he does, I'm. Gonna- <laughs> Okay, uh, okay. That's real quick, you, let's, let's, let's do our <laughs> plugs real quick and then uh, we'll get into this amazing yeah. condition here. Uh, real quick, check us out at AmericanSlackerPodcast.com, the beautiful new website where you can get access to all of our social media. Um, also, send us an email at AmericanSlackerPodcast at gmail.com. And don't okay. forget, uh, you can always check out our stuff on Instagram, uh, our Patreon, and we also have our official merchandise up on the website. So be sure to go check that out. Awesome. Thanks again, Dan, and uh, lead the way, man. And until next time, people, thank you so much for tuning in. We love each and every one of you. Oh, thank you guys very much. I mean, I'm going to just take a couple of seconds to like tune oh, this yeah. thing. Take your time, baby. Come on. And until next time, people, that's it. There you go. So. Yeah, uh, if I mess up, I, it's just the way it is. I never play this song, but I just thought it would be a great way to, um, you know, to say fuck you to Jay. And, uh, <laughs> and before I do the song, I mean, we, uh, we've we done some tours with uh, Bam, My American Heart, and uh, Jesse, the, the singer, or the guitar American. player, writer, uh, he sings back up. Okay, so yeah, this song is called Payback, and this one is about... Uh, we were talking about earlier in the uh, the show, Jay's ex love. Um, I think this was about. I mean, I think all of our songs that he sings in usually it's about her or whatever. Every artist has their muse. Um, for this song, I like it because, like on the first record, um, the song I sang earlier, it's kind of like the same type of thing. You know, it's a relationship. You you're in the band, and then. Uh, it's kind of like you have to choose between one or the other or whatever. And then, uh, and then, you know, you choose the band and it, the relationship goes to shit and, and all that stuff. Um, it's called payback and it's completely different than everything else on the record, but whatever. This is not a test, not a test It can't be any secret Do you think that I could see you? No slate, I need you To open my chest, my chest Fix whatever you need to be fixed As long as I can hold you Breathing with them all that I've waited for This is made back for all of the words Never meant enough to keep me concerned Every homesick letter Never had the strength to find your door This is just enough to keep
Oh, I guess I'll just be waiting.